Warning, viewer discretion is advised. You are choosing to watch this content. You were warned. New, 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 new world order.
What's going on, everybody? It is Coach Greg Adams back in here with another YouTube live stream. Shout out to the Coach Gang. And that's you. For being in here, being involved, and being active on this YouTube channel. And welcome to the Wake Up Show. Part of the Free Agent Lifestyle Podcast here on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel. You back in here with the Bruce Wayne of this ish. New, 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 new world the order. King of Kings, the King of Content, and the Speaker of Truth. Yours truly. The notorious one, new, 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 aka new Mr. Order. Cocholini, better known as the prognosticator Coach Adamus, and you're in the Desert Storm bunker with no none other than EWF, the every woman's fantasy, none other than the undebatable, the unbinder from Fixes Binds LLC, CEO, Chairman, Niggero. That's what we doing around here, and also the eight-time demonetized champion of YouTube. Indeed, we back in here for a great show. I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, I hope nigga? you guys had a fantastic weekend and, and you came back out of jail. No bail. I hope y'all guys got some peace, some quiet, and some freedom, which are the tenets of the free agent lifestyle. And I hope you guys at least, at least, got a little bit of junior college action in the building. And if you didn't, I hope you guys had some peace anyway. I hope you guys had a fantastic football weekend. We'll talk about that later on in today's show. And today we got the topic of today. Women reveal what they hate and what they love about men because we know misandry is going. And this is the one thing that they would love for you to give up freely. And this is an actual thing here. The women are going to say it here. I'm not going to say it. And Kanye. I'm not going to say what race, what people, we know I can't say that. Indeed, we can't even say that. But we're going to let them use their own words to reveal to you what the most important thing it is for you to have and never give up. We're also going to have baby mama drama coming up here on CGA. We got baby llama mama drama out here. And we got some advice for you youngins and uh, you men that have been raised by single mothers. And uh, bitter baby mamas at that. We're going to give you some advice because uh, this is very, very important advice for you to do. And if you was on my Twitter this morning, you saw the bit of advice that I gave everybody out here. This is something to look out for. We have a little bit of doom and gloom CGA. We got straggle and sniggle theater. And yes, we're going to give a little bit of evidence that perhaps your girl, Jada Pinkett Smith, was in fact not lying about Tupac and her wanting to marry. So that is actually going to come up here. I thought it was interesting. A video popped up in my suggestion box. And uh, it might give a little bit of credibility that indeed there was some talk about Tupac and Jada getting married. And listen, the reason why we're going to bring it up is because why not? Mm. All right. I always said Will's the one holding Jada hostage. And this is going to be inevitably true. And we're going to talk about that in today's episode. So do me a favor. Buckle your seatbelt. You in here with the King of Kings. You in here with the best edutainment on YouTube. And the first thing I want you to do is hit that like new, button. New, 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 new hit that order. like button. If you cannot, you know, I know you're at your desk niggling. I know you're at your job, your job. I know you're out there scanning groceries with your earpiece in. I know you got all of that coming up, but I want you to take an opportunity to hit that like button. Let's get to a thousand likes as a thousand people hit enter the room or else I'm going to play something annoying. Not only that, to contribute to the day show. Dollar sign, the notorious CGA on the cash app, Venmo, Coach Greg Adams TV, PayPal. PayPal.me backslash Coach Greg Adams and that is pinned to the top of the live chat. On the Free Agent Lifestyle channel when you can super chat on new, 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 new world order. the Notorious CGA channel, if you will. Um, anyway, we got something coming up here. Let me get to the earlier contributors to today's show because Ninjas got, just got paid Friday night. Sucker for love, Ninja said. You know, the post-nut clarity going to hit hard after you face roll that FUPA print. All right, shout out to all the nasty boys. Oh, that's nasty. Yikes. Face print that FUPA print. Face roll that FUPA print. That sounds like some disgusting things that I may or may not have done in my past. Yes, we've all been down bad out here. We've all been. We've been down bad out here. Nasty boys. Oh, that's nasty. You know y'all nasty ninjas be out here talking about you love it. I love all of them FUPA. I love those flaps, you know. And just is down bad. I should have put a poll up in the middle of all of this. Shout out to Albert Wesker says one thing. The number one thing XX is hate about men equals leverage and options. And uh, a lot of guys don't have leverage. I see a lot of ninjas not operating in leverage at all. 
And this is indicative of a man that's 30, 31, 32, 35 and below. They're just out here really trying to get no leverage. They're really trying to play the game with no leverage at all. <laughs> like, damn. But uh, we got to talk about that later on in the day's show. Shout out to Daniel McGee. McGee, he says, leverage options, peace, quiet, and freedom. Looking for a 2020 Corvette C8 Uncle Earl status. All right, shout I got money. All right, he looking for that C8. Anybody have one? Anybody have one he can buy? Brown through an oath, still got my bail money. My man stayed free and out of jail. Didn't even need to spend his bail money that he had hidden in his sock. Shout out to Teron McAdams. Birthday weekend was a success. Now back to my daily red pills. And he says, good to see the coach gang in the building. Shout out to you and all the birthday ninjas. All right, my birthday is this week. All right, shout out to all my birthday ninjas, the Libras. I think they switched the, the signs as well. This might be Scorpio. I think they tried to switch my horoscope sign. I was like, no, nah, Ninja, I was born a Libra, and that's what I am. Y'all ain't changing the rules mid-game. Shout out to Andre413 Reform. One of my JUCOs is trying to be, get cuffed. I went knee-deep, coach. Give me the buzzer. Mm. Well, JUCOs can. They can try to latch. They can try to latch. So it's not a violation. You just got to make sure you keep your distance. All right, and save yourself. Because JUCOs inherently aren't like a... Uh, uh, traditional street meat and they will latch you know they will latch they're there to latch backdooring into relationships and that's what you're trying to avoid hence you're trying to give them a severance package shout out to you shout out to my severance package girls out here Uh uh-oh paypal is bugging out all right did i get canceled again over there all right every week every week with them all right look they ain't let me in i got locked out all right maybe i didn't shout out to hawk i cry and I don't know what that face emoji is. And Rational Rationality says tackling some Mastodons in Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Tennessee this week. I can only imagine what type of snow cow activity you got out there. All right. Who's got their first super chat? I don't know how that happened. It's the 20th or what? Or it's your 20th super chat, I suppose. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. Shout out to Mohammed. We'll call you that. Uh, he says, have a great weekend. Hope you had a great win, coach. Just a request for the coach gang to keep me in your prayers, please. I got a court case coming up next week for driving charges, and I'm potentially facing lengthy jail time. Protect your neck, brothers. He says, I'll continue to spread your message, even if they lock me up. Time again, they want to lock me up. Damn. All right, shout out to you, brother Colleen. And uh, hopefully... You don't get any jail time here for something, you know, that that's insane, by the way. That's insane to have to deal with that. But uh, we, we got you up, man. Blessings in this situation, man. We'll pray. Uh, we got a uh, shout out to Ty S. He says the whisper stream from New York was impressive. New York. Shout out to everybody. And so down insane says keep up the good work. Ain't many more real ones left out here. There's there's not that many, especially when it comes to this content. Tony T says coffee for you, coach. Salute. And uh, Ken Kelvin Perkins says child support equals extortion. And it's also probably what they're doing is committing a crime. But that's just on my part. That's just an opinion on my side. They're criminals in the mafia organization led by led by. We're not going to get into them. Actually, I'm going to talk about child support here coming up. Uh, Because uh, Antonio Brown's baby mama got him on that child support and he refuses to pay. So we're going to talk about that in a minute here. And we're going to see how bitter baby moms deal with issues like that. Baby mama drama. Emmanuel said, here's here's your espresso coach. Shout out to you. And none of, without further ado, let's get to the stream. Let's get to some doom and gloom action. Because y'all niggas need to pay attention because CGA again was on point. Doom and gloom. CGA, let's go. Doom and gloom. CGA is back in here, and we got some terrible report uh, to report. Terrible news to report. And uh, everybody best protect their neck. We live in some very, very curious times. 
We do have World War Three that's gone into effect. We just haven't called it that. But the world is at war. And you know what time it is? When the world is at war, it's time for profiteering and it's time to collect from the people. And it says right here, these steps are urgent. The IRS takes action in the wake of a record-breaking $688 billion tax gap. So, um, yeah, man, listen, there's not some people that you don't want to mess with. And these are one of them. And they saying they came up shout. They saying the people came up shout. So let's talk about it. The IRS announced on Thursday that Americans failed to pay an estimated $688 billion in taxes owed on their 2021 returns, marking the most significant tax shortfall ever recorded. The Wall Street Journal added the tax gap has increased by more than $192 billion from the previous estimate from 2014, 2016, and 13B from the estimated 2017 to 2019. And remember, they hit Microsoft off with what? $30 billion tax bill from 2014. They going all the way back, approximately $542 billion of the $688 billion total is attributed to unreported income. While the remaining portion of the tax gap is connected to individuals who fail to file their returns on time or as required, that will end up being 77 billion and or filed on time but neglected to pay their tax bill in full on time and that represented 68 billion dollars so uh as you can see uh the government is definitely in a bind all right i'm in a bind nate they in a bind and this is why they hired those what thirty thousand dollars thirty thousand tax uh armed Tax collection agents, yeah, they coming after ninjas. So, hey, they're going to be looking up all of them turbo tax paying ass ninjas. All right, they come, they coming for their money. So you better have your shit stocked up uh, for when they show up because they trying to show up. And that takes me to the next story right here. Oh, as, as you can see here, um, this is the story that they talked about. The time the American military let $2.3 trillion go missing. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that's just. Oh, the humanity. And that happened about a year or two ago. So uh, I think that was uh, 2021. No, I'm sorry. That was 2001. And they said they lost $2.3 trillion. They don't know where it went. But that was taxpayer money, too. So maybe they can locate that, man. It better be, man. We living in some curious times, man. Don't think this shit is going to ease up anytime soon. Speaking of, we have Broward County. We are now here. The Broward County Sheriff Department. <laughs> All right. Give them a allegedly. They coming after that PPP money. As I told you, if you took PPP, you damn near a fool if you didn't have a legitimate reason to take it. And I said this is going to be the ninja trap. Of course, they're going to trap ninjas because ninjas is trying to always pull up a hustle. And Broward County Sheriff deputies have been targeted as committing fraud against the pay loan protection payment plan, whatever they call it. Let's go ahead and show you the story. Hearing from Broward Sheriff Gregory Tony, after 17 deputies have been arrested and charged with fraud, Local 10's Roy Ramos is live with this developing story. Roy. Nicole, and we have learned that nearly 100 BSO employees did apply for the PPP oh, loans. And of the 100, 17 of them are now facing federal charges. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the humanity. All, the All right, 17, uh, 100, 100 sheriffs, deputies applied, 100, 17 got popped, and that's just, they just getting started. All right, they just getting started. I told you this was a ninja trap, and you guys got to watch out for it, man. I, I wasn't feeling it. You know, they was like, hey, coach, you got an LLC, and you have, you know, you can have several LLCs. You can get you some free money. And I was like, that money ain't free. That's a trap. It's a trap. I told y'all ninjas is a trap. And by the way, I told you in real time, when they rolled this program out, I was like, y'all going to jail. Y'all going to jail. <laughs> I was like, I would not even touch it. I'm leaving it alone. And these are professionals. These are professionals, let alone the people who actually were doing it. And that weren't professionals. Let's let her roll right here. Well, as you mentioned today, we did get a chance to speak with Broward Sheriff Gregory Tony about these allegations. And he says if his employees were involved in this type of criminal activity, they do not deserve to be working in the law enforcement profession. Did you believe you were receiving these loans legitimately? Seven. Of course, look, human resource department. Look, Ninja one, Ninja two. Uh-uh. 
They know y'all ninjas ain't got no damn. They know y'all ninjas ain't got no damn businesses. Team members of the Broward Sheriff's Office, which include both BSO deputies and detention deputies, released from the federal courthouse in Fort Lauderdale after being. Oh, damn. Not the hair back. He got that conk in his hair. Look, look at these ninjas, man. They ain't showing no teeth. Niggas always got to show they teeth. Tar hey, man, that was a ninja target program plan. They already know it. And by the way, uh, a lot of big businesses got away with it too, but they had legitimate employees. And a lot of them socked that money away so that if they come looking for them, they just going to pay it up. Dotted on charges that include wire fraud after federal investigators said they fraudulently applied for and received funds from the Paycheck Protection Program. By the way, all of these people are innocent until proven guilty. I'll say that. And here's the thing, man. When you messing with federal income, ta I mean, federal loans like this and you defraud it and they get you on wire fraud, that's terrible, man. You don't want this. This ain't county activity. This Fetty activity. And you, you, what do you call it? You gave up the information willingly. You willingly gave them the information and you walk right into the trap, just like a big old wide, large mouth bass. Or PPP loans. Bonds were set, they're being released. Uh, nobody, as far as I know, is being detained. And uh, we'll take it from there. We'll be back in court. Attorney Brian Silver represents three of the defendants, some of whom have either been suspended or placed on leave pending the outcome of the investigation. I can't comment on the nature of the case. While the charging documents do not allege that any of the defendants committed to charge offenses in the course of their official duties, this does not in any way diminish the seriousness of what the defendants are alleged to have done here. Sheriff Gregory Tony said he first learned of the crimes in November of 2021, prompting him to investigate all 5,500 of his employees, including himself and other top brass. All right, so let's get this straight. You big dummy. Let's get let, let's get this straight. These guys have learned, known about this since November of 2021, and it has almost taken them two years to complete the best investigation. So, yeah, man, I mean, this is how far they'll go back. It's just because they haven't got you yet doesn't mean they won't get you. And uh, they will go as far back as they need to to be able to do the investigation. And here's here's another thing about this. Let me show you a couple of people here. Uh, shout out to the attorney Silver, Mr. Silver here. I'm not going to say what race, what people. We know I can't say that. Now, I can't say that. But you also have people like this guy right here, U.S. attorneys. Uh, these attorneys, man, they don't do nothing. They ain't, they ain't got a, nothing better to do than to lock ninjas up, make cases against people. I don't know if you know these type of people, these attorneys, U.S. attorneys, any attorney, by the way. All right. Criminals, thieves and lawyers. All right. Any attorney, by the way, they really bored. You know what I mean? Like if you saw the movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, they trying to lock people up. They make like seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year. Um, most of their student loan is being paid back through Joe Biden or a pay payment plan where they they pay 10, 10 or 20 years back and then they get their student loans expunged. These are some interesting people. These are the people who, um, you know, like these are the people who apply to be like uh, mall cops. You know what I mean? They're like mall cops and they can't wait to bust you. They're the loss prevention program. They're the loss prevention program and do not try to bribe them. They will get your ass, man. These people, man, like you got to watch out for folks like this. They, they're really do-gooders and they love to just write paper. They love to just write cases on you. They just be sitting up with their legal part. Let's write a case against them. They just be sitting up trying to get ninjas. And look at these ninjas right here. Look at this guy. Look at him. Yo, man, you got to watch out for folks like this. These, these are on the other side of every hustle right here. It, it's the 10 years. Yep. These, these people are on the other side of the hustle. So they got ninjas like this. Anytime you think about doing a hustle, they got ninjas like this. Right? They make $70,000 a year. They just waiting to bust your ass. Shout out to you. They waiting to bust you. And they don't got nothing better to do. That's their job, just to bust your ass. All right? So always remember that. That's what I always remember. I know I've been dealing with a lot of attorneys in my life, and I will tell you, man, they ain't the funnest people to be around. They ain't the funnest people to be around. And they looking to get your monkey ass. Anyway, uh, let's see if I can add any more to this story right here. Uh, just to give you guys a heads up, I've actually warned you about this. Prompting him to investigate all 5,500 of his employees, including himself and other top brass. Of the 17 indicted, seven BSO deputies and uh -oh. one sergeant in law enforcement, Woo! and eight detention back. deputies and one sergeant in corrections. Damn, it's a and lot of ninjas. Hold up. I seen a soggy Latina chick. 
All right, look at these. Wait a minute. Is that two women? I can't tell. Well, there's two my non-binary. Boy, she thicker than the snicker. All right, what is all these uh, coppers doing out here looking like mastodons? Let me ring the bell on these ninjas right here. Is that a les? Uh, that must be a lesbian. He's I can't tell. Sergeant in law. Yeah, that. Oh boy, that's a butch looking. I can't tell. Enforcement and eight detention deputies and one sergeant in corrections. Oh. I hate to see that knowing some of the individuals and seeing the names on that list that's being indicted. Indicted. Some of them were good officers, but you're only as good as the last act and conduct that you execute. We learned that. Damn! Look at what in the. What kind of police department is this? Remind me not to go to Broward because I need to check in. These are some oblong, odd-shaped ass people down here. It's involved received tens of thousands of dollars. She going to jail. Oh, Tamika Tata Alicia, Officer Tata Alicia, going. All these ninjas got caught. <laughs> Goodness, what we doing? While the investigation has proved that some of whom were investigated did have legitimate Another ninja. At the very least, the 17 now facing federal uh -oh. charges. Damn, who girlfriend is that? Lord have mercy. Charges. She looking like. China. And by the way, it's not just ninjas. It's all minorities. They're going to round up all the minorities on this PPP. On this PPP, you ain't seen not one white person come across this screen. Not to say that they haven't done any, but them ninjas know real fast they had a lawyers lined up so that uh, Mr. Silver can actually take the case before it gets to the public. I'm not going to say what race, what people. We know I can't say that. All right, who girlfriend is this? Allegedly. Lick em low lover right here. Did not. Officer, gonna be Officer Lick em low down there. <laughs> she got him, got, got going on. And look at this ninja head. All right, let me stop. I can't go to Broward anymore. He participating in criminal activities. We don't want you in this profession. I, uh, by the way, man, ring the bell. I told y'all. I told y'all. I told y'all. I told y'all. You guys got to watch out. You guys got to try to not take shortcuts like this. You know, there's some things you can control, some things you cannot control. I knew right away that this PPP thing was not above board. They said it was a loan. And then they're like, it's a grant, but it's kind of a loan. But technically, it's a grant. And people were arguing me this live, right? When this rolled out, I was like, don't touch it. Nah, coach, you just don't understand. It's. And I said, it's a loan. They were like, yeah, it's technically a loan, but it's a grant. I was like, mm. y'all are going to jail easily. <laughs> CGA called it. Let me go ahead and flip this banner, and then we're going to continue with it. Is that the doom and gloom for the day? Uh, just a, one more doom and gloom right here. Here's a report, and I reported on this, so I better follow up. Joe Jonas, Sophia Turner reached an amicable resolution in the custody battle after mediation. So I got to give it to um. Uh, so Sophie Turner, she actually was hanging out with Taylor Swift in the in the Americas, but she lives in the UK and she reached the amicable resolution, which amicable resolution, which means to tell me that she probably is about to lose her case. And she came crying back to Joe Jonas. And what they're going to do is they're going to share custody of their children and they're going to have a quite unusual custody battle for a three and a one year old, which is despicable and disgraceful to me where the girls will remain with the mother from August 9th, sorry, October 9th to October 21st. And uh, the, actu the actress is permitted to travel with them throughout the U.S. or the U.K. as she pleases. And she's been here in the United States with Taylor Swift. And then it says right here, then she will deliver the kids to Joe Jonas on the 21st of October, and they'll remain with him into November 2nd. So if you're keeping track, a uh, three-year-old and a one-year-old are about to be co-parents back and forth between the United States and the, and the United Kingdom. Mm. What? And then it says right here, the pair will continue to hand off custody to each other through January 7th, 2024, giving the kids opportunity to spend Thanksgiving with their father and Christmas with their mother. If you're keeping track, <laughs> This is terrible. You got them going back and forth on planes doing custody exchanges over the pond. And if I'm not mistaken, mm. Joe Jonas probably lives in California. What the hell? Oh, this is going to be a headache. I mean, I've heard of some horrible co-parenting agreements, but this one has to be disgraceful. And I'm wondering at whose expense they're going to do this. I know whose expense the children are. Ex the children's expense is this is this. Possibly the in the best interest of their children. Oh. Mm. 
Ay, ay, ay. What a disaster, man. Look, this is what happens. You gotta be, you better better really take consideration of who you're dealing with out here because these are the things you can put yourself into when you get into these custody battles. Three and one. Poor children. I say the children lose, man. Anyway, that's doom and gloom for today. All right, what we're going to do here, let's get let's get these super chats and then we'll get straggling sniggle theater. We got some interesting straggling sniggle news to report to you. Let me check all of these alternative means of donations to the baby mama terrorist fund. Shout out to Hickerman Hickerman steel. He says, do XX's find a higher body count attractive in men as many of women that will say they do not. And they're worried about STIs and stuff like that. It's interesting because then if the guy if, if the guy is not able to perform well in bed, then that's going to be blamed on him. So I'm going to say in general, a higher body count is going to be best suited for women's needs in the bedroom. Because if he's not efficient in the bedroom, he's going to take an L, meaning he couldn't hit it right. And yes, your wife will go and cuck you or leave or cheat on you if you cannot perform well in the bed. If you cannot, I'm of the impression that earlier in women's lives, they prefer men that have experience. They're going to lean towards or they're going to be more attracted to or they're going to get more opportunities with men that have more experience than women. In our world, if I called a woman a virgin, that's not a pejorative. It's not a negative term. But if I call a man a virgin, it is a negative term. So thus women will use um, you. They will use that term against you as a negative. You're a virgin. Okay. So I'm supposed to have a high body count. Well, if you do, they'll call you dirty Johnson Rodney and all this stuff. But there are a groups of women that actually have children by men that they know have multiple children from other women. So you do, you make the call on that one. You make the call. I don't think overwhelmingly it's going to be used as a negative and this is speaking in general. This is speaking in general. Uh, shout out to uh, whatever to call you here. It is Abdius. That's what we'll call you. Long time listener coach. Got offered some peace leave from a straggle in a wheelchair. Oh, my goodness. This weekend. Oh, the humanity. He says, while clapping them cheeks, the other thing going through my mind was. Oh, the humanity. Nasty boy, stand up. Oh, oh that's nasty. Uh, Straight jacket. Okay, shout out to the coach gang. I'm going to tell you, there's something I have not done. I have not banged a woman that had her legs paralyzed. I'm going to tell you, I've had some down bad times. I've had some nasty times. Oh, that's nasty. I'm not here to lie to you, but I've never had a woman whose legs dangle. Mm. I, I've never done it. I've, uh, that's something I've never done. And, you know, in my years as I'm aging, I think I could take a pass. My curiosity is peaked, but I think I'm going to pass on that. Noodle leg ass mitt. I'm not, I'm going to go, I'm going to go no ski on that one now. Now, if I was 14, 15, maybe 20 years younger, I might have folded, but that folding is going to be like there's no, mm, mm, not saying that. Not saying that it wouldn't be good. But, you know, <laughs> all right, let me stop, man. That's despicable nature of you. Shout out to you, man. That's that's a new one, you know. That's I've never done it before, anyway. Shout out to the nasty boys. Oh, that's nasty. All right, shout out to who is. Let me see if I can say your name. Lamar. Smith, I'm currently living with my ex-girlfriend who's a single mother. I made the unfortunate decision to cohabitate. Less than two months after moving in together, she hit me with the bait and switch. I broke up with her, but I'm still living with her until June 2024 when our release is over. Never again. Free agent lifestyle for life. <laughs> I told y'all ninjas, man. Yo, Lamar, man. Hey, man, find out what your break the lease plan is. Find out how much it's going to cost to break your lease. 
I will tell you, in certain situations, you might not take a loss. Never know, take no short so losses, man. You know what? I, listen, just bail on her. <laughs> I'm not telling you to do this. This is not legal advice. Just bail on her. And then if she goes back, she'll just see if she moves. I say, let's move out together and then ditch her. Then, then if they fill the apartment vacancy, you're good. Just as long as they fill the apartment vacancy. But I always tell you with this cohabitation, man, this is, I, I gave you the stats on cohabitation. They're dismal. But then the first year, 50% of cohabitations break up. Okay. Now, within the first couple of months, the breakup has already happened. Like you moved in, you already broke up, but you're living together. And the bait and switch is real. Guys, I bet you she, I bet you she, I bet you she uh, cuts you off from sex. Break at a Lisa. He said, coach is right. Yeah, look, if, if you're in a lease, now the problem is she might not leave, but she might be forced to leave once she gets an eviction notice. But what's, what's going to happen is, let's just say for all intents and purposes, you live by yourself and you got tight on money and you just moved out. Now, I'm not saying you should do this. What will happen is they cannot charge you for anything if they can find a, a, a tenant to replace you, if they find a tenant to replace you, whatever that time period is, that's what you owe. So if, let's say it takes it, let's say that in 10 days, they find a tenant to replace you. You're good. You're good. You, could, you just walked away and they found a tenant to replace you. And I think they have to replace you at the amount you were paying or greater, which we know rents are higher. So you're good. This is in general. And then don't take this as legal advice, but you're good. Now, the other thing is, now, if it takes two months, you owe in between what that was to replace. So only do this if you know there's a lot of people that are going to move in. If you know people aren't going to move in, don't do it. Yeah, CGA disclaimer. It, de it depends on your municipality, too. So take my advice. Don't take it. <laughs> All right, but sometimes you got you to gotta get out. Somebody, you got to get out of there, man, because you think you're going to survive. Look, you got to survive like, how many months? Eight, eight, ten months? Hell no. Uh, guys, do not cohabitate with women. Don't cohabitate. This ain't the old days. You, you guys move in and you thought you was about to get some cheap in-home peace leave. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's talk about paying for, paying for sex. How much would it be for him to keep paying this and they already broken up? Dude, this is a fat L. Does it affect your references? No. I mean, you basically, you did nothing. All right, but uh, if they don't, if they don't, yeah, because you got too much at risk here because you already broke up. You can't bring any of the girls to your apartment, obviously. She can't bring any other guys. If she gets desperate, what's going to happen is at the end of the lease, she's going to get desperate. She's going to get desperate and know it's coming to an end. Then she's going to start doing shit against you. Uh, it's just a bad claim. After about three months up into the lease, just take the L. Just walk. Just walk. Stop cohabitating, man. And uh, yeah, and never if you go through an eviction. Let's just say she stopped. Co this is these are scenarios. What? Let's just say she stops covering her half of the rent or whatever she was obligated to pay under your agreement. What if she stops paying that? <laughs> and and women know how that women will sit up under an eviction notice. They'll, they'll sit up under it. So if they stop paying, you, let's just say she stops paying whatever you agreed, then you can't cover it. And then there's an eviction process. They'll sit up there. They'll sit in there. I actually just experienced this. A girl I knew was in a bind. And um, she was a junior college girl. She was in a bind. She had a female roommate. Set up under that woman for six months. Six months. And didn't budge. And I was like, how you sitting up under, bro, I don't know how they do it. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how women do it. They're not scared of this bullshit. They'll sit up under there. They'll get sued. They'll get a whole bunch of fees attached to it. They'll just sit up under there. Six months, late fees, attorney's fees, filing fees, court hearings, serving. They'll just sit. They'll plunk their ass right there and won't budge. I'm like, these people are crazy, man. They super duper crazy when it comes to this type of stuff. So you need to get out of there or you need to get her up out of there, but it's going to be hard. They ain't got no shame. Kaylin says, what's up, coach? 
in your opinion. Do you think that Jada is the worst wife in the history of wives? If she isn't, she has to be at least the top five. I'm, 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 I'm telling you what my stance is on Jada. I think, I think Will Smith is getting everything he asked for and more for his association with Jada. I'm blaming Will. I'm blaming Will. And it's all Jermaine's fault. It's always Jermaine's fault. She didn't want to be a wife. He made her, he made her walk this path. And, and really what I think Jada is allegedly, I believe she's a witch. She just ain't told you yet. Just like a lot of women you guys are dating, and I've said this and I've done streams on this, they're witches. She's a witch. And you guys are dating witches and then trying to wife witches up. She's a witch. And this is an opinion. This is a ledge. I think she probably is wants to acknowledge that she might be in the witchcraft. I mean, some of the things that she's done and said will basically tell you that. She, she's probably operating as a witch. And uh, you guys are trying to make, listen, I know, I be mean, listen, stop trying to marry these 304s and these witches. I think there's only 10% of women in the United States that is marriageable. And I use this statistic data basically to mirror what marriages were 100 years ago. Only 10% of people were literally married in the, in the United States. They were only 10%. And it grew over time. That goes back to 19 and 10 in the 1900s. Only 10%. It was not common. Then when the state got involved, then more people did it. But you guys are marrying witches. Stop marrying these witches. And marriage is not for everybody. It's not. Marriage is only for a small elite class of people or people that are impoverished. If you're neither of those and you're just an indentured servitude or an indentured slave, marriage is not for you. In fact, during the peculiar institution, marriage was highly not sought after or done for at least 400 years of the fundamental foundational black Americans. You guys had no marriage for 400 plus years other than jumping the broom. And then you was not like you were likely not to see your mate after you married him. Like, come on, guys, let's get this shit together. Most of y'all are unmarriageable men and women. Male and female, this is not an institution for everybody. Not. Nah. It's elite or poverty, poverty. <laughs> That's it. Every one of you other indentured servants. You go getters, you ham and eggers, you pencil and paper pushers. You clock punchers, all right? All the rest of us, it's not for us, all right? We keep getting finessed. We're the ones getting finessed over this marriage thing. Stop marrying witches. Shout out to Sizzle says, it sure feels good to see the free agent lifestyle paying off. He says, your boy is finally settled into his apartment watching you on the big screen. Shout out to you, man. You've been working very hard, too. You've been working very hard. Very hard. All right, and it's good to see it paying off for you. I'm going to get to a lot more Super Chats. I just had somebody else's birthday reminder pop up on my screen. Like, how the hell did her birthday get in here? Okay. Wow. Shout out to you. Shout out to Steven. White says, CGA, my ex-wife informed me that she's moving to Wyoming for a job. Should I follow her to be close to my kids? Twins, 13 and 11. I'm in D.C. now. I was thinking Denver. To be close by. All right, guys, listen up right here. Listen up. All the humanity. Are you listening? Shout out to Steven. Guys, I'm glad for this community because you guys back up and validate a lot of things that I teach you. You hear this? This guy's got kids. They, The husband and wife, sorry, the former partners, the co-parents live in D.C. She's going to take a job to Wyoming. In her mind, she's just going to take the kids. And that's what you're doing. She's like, okay, I don't, what is your custody agreement? Okay, do you have 50-50? If you have 50-50, you can try to fight to keep the kids there and say, you take your ass to Wyoming. But, of course, ninjas ain't going to fight. <laughs> ninjas ain't going to fight. Now you're going to uproot all of your shit to go follow a bitch. I never follow women. I don't follow any women in my life. You know why? Because the women in my life bring confusion and shit. So, like, need to win New Jack. I'll cancel that bitch. Look at me. This is the life I chose. Ninja Robbie so cold that my heart done froze. I built with the empire on the low. The narcs don't know I'm the weatherman. I take that cocoa leaf and make that snow. Man, I don't follow no woman. Woman want to go? Let her go. I ain't never following no woman. <laughs> All right. Never. 
I mean, that's going to be the dumbest plan. That's going to be the dumbest thing in humanity. That's just my opinion. But you can do whatever you need to do. Because <laughs> what if what she's 13? The kids are 13 now. What if she gets fired from that job? Now you stuck in Denver. Now you stuck in Denver, Ninja. Oh, my Lord, Jesus. Man, just get a custody plan together. Whether the kids need to live with you and go see her or the kids, you see her and go see the kids. I ain't never going to follow no woman. All right, anyway, even even <clears throat> even the Bible probably says, where's my Bible people? Even the Bible says don't follow no woman. And that's according to Adam's 316. All right, Adam 316 says never follow a woman. <laughs> All right, anyway. <laughs> 1 800, don't do it. Yeah, have fun. Hey, man. Shout out to y'all. But anyway, shout out to Jamal says, guys, guys who say they want a woman's soul should look at the type of men who have their soul, a.k.a. Tupac has Jada Shakur Smith's soul, free agent lifestyle for life. I know, what's these guys I want a woman's soul? That's actually funny to me. Q Time, shout out to you. Thank you for that contribution, co-sponsorship. He says, he says, happy birthday contribution and support to you, coach. Appreciate you, brother, man. We almost there. Justin O says, TikTok cosplayer. Inquisitor 3 deleted himself over the weekend after a false allegation made a uh, claim that he SA'd a woman here. Protect yourself out here, gents. Somebody shared a story about that. I just don't know much about the guy, so I have to read up on it. I did hear that a guy recently did delete himself over a false allegation, and he wouldn't be the first, and he's not going to be the last. Random thoughts. Says shout out from South Africa, 25 years old and have no interest in relationships recently. Joined the JUCO since I work at a university and I'll never look back. All right, he ain't going back. Dark side forever in the building. Wait a minute, that ain't it. Where's the dark side brothers here? All right, shout out to Chris Jericho. He says, coach, this NWO war got these reporters and content creators making business decisions no matter what the NWO is doing to get their uh, get their get back, nobody says nothing. And he says right here, he says, nobody's saying nothing. Everyone stay dangerous out here. And I don't get involved in NWO business because what I know is NWO business probably has something to do with land, resources, and or drugs. <laughs> which people don't talk about land resources and drugs. It don't have nothing to do with morality. It don't have nothing to do with who's right or who's wrong and money. Okay. So let's boil down to what it is. Let's get down to brass tax. Let's get down to the bottom line. This is about resources, land, money, or drugs. So you will never catch me. On one side about, oh, these people are the right and the righteous. Oh, hell no. <laughs> and drugs might be one of the leading reasons why it, why, why people are getting busy. Because drugs make a lot of profit around here. But you didn't hear that from me. I'm just saying. New, 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 new world order. I'm just saying. That's all it has to do with. And you know what I mean? Unfortunately, we've been fighting these fights for thousands of years. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Derek Eaton says the key word in the PPP loan is loan. And he says you have to pay it back, you big dummies out here. Yeah. You big dummy. And then just don't want to pay it back. Joe K, CGA tells no lies. Men, look out, man. Look out. There's barbecue in there. Indeed. <laughs> Ask gas for cash. I'm not getting in the middle of this shit. Like, I haven't taken a stance on any of these wars. I just know. They need to fight these wars. Let's get back to Straggle and Sniggle, and of course, I'll catch up with the rest of these Super Chats. Hey, ride with me if you ride with me. You can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky. Come get high with me. That's a deal, right? Straggle and Sniggle Theater, let's get back to our most favorite city in America, and it is Memphis, Tennessee. Shout out to Memphis, Tennessee out here and the beat banging. Oh, my goodness. What are we got here? Nissan Ultimate Activities. And who baby mama car did he steal? Is this how they get down according to Detroit and Memphis, Tennessee? Apparently, you can ride in your car with no doors. 
apparently this is a thing. And we've caught these guys doing this for several, several uh, times here. And I don't know why you would let your foot dangle outside going 70 plus mile an hour. This is probably some ninja activity at best. And these sniggles, they don't have any regard for anything. I mean, you got your slides on with the socks, dirty ass socks to uh, even admit there. And we got the license plate. We got the Nissan Altima. Who baby mama car is this? And we got some ninjas in here and they making beats. Oh, Memphis. Oh, Memphis, man. Yo. Is this how they do it in Memphis? Y'all want me to care about everybody in Memphis, Tennessee. And by the way, y'all like, how you know it's Memphis, coach? Well, there it is right there. A normal day in Memphis, Tennessee. I, I do, We do have receipts. So, Sniggles do Sniggle. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. Look at these Sniggles, man. Oh, my goodness. I bet you they got baby mamas, too. They definitely got baby mamas. The Flintstones. <laughs> Meet the Flintstones. All right, let's go to our next favorite city, Houston. Houston, Texas. Stand up. All right, uh, you know what I mean? You can say what you want to say. Houston pastor ordered to pay $2.4 million for giving out STDs, mm. not the church. All right, this is allegedly, no, he's been ordered. So I guess so it be ordered, so it be done. A prominent Houston pastor has been ordered to pay $2.4 million to a woman that a jury found he gave herpes to. Mm. Oh, the humanity. And it says right here, after a three-day trial and six and a half hours of deliberation, the jury, the jury unanimously found Reverend Ralph D. West II, Mr. Clapcheeks, Reverend Pork Chop Deacon Clapcheeks, liable. Ay, 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 let's hear the story right here, man. This is Houston, Texas. Polk, who says it was a three-day trial with six and a half hours of deliberations. And after that, a jury found Reverend Ralph D. West the second liable and ordered that hefty judgment. Right, I can't fix it. She's got it for the rest of her life. Attorney Sean Murphy is speaking for his client, who a jury found contracted genital herpes from Reverend Ralph D. West II. Oh, the humanity. Oh, Reverend Ralph D. All right, Pastor Clapcheeks, don't say it ain't so. And here's the thing about it, man. Women are going to find a way to get their bag. So it's not like the good old days, man. Sex is not free. Sex. Hey, people keep saying Punani's free. I'm going to say, look, look, look. Let me give you a message. Punani is not free. Like, you might get some free Punani. But if you keep going back to it, you'll eventually pay. And one piece of punani is they're going to make you pay for every piece you ever got. So this is it. This is yet another example. I know you think sex is free. I'm just letting you guys know it only takes one piece of puss to make you pay for every piece of puss you ever got. I'm letting you know, guys. So now this ninja got think about all the puss this ninja got. He about to pay back taxes on puss. And don't ever. Don't ever say it ain't going to be me. Guys, who knows? That's the that's the chance you're taking trying to get free puss. I'm not telling you to pay for it either. I'm just telling you it ain't free. It ain't free at all. So look at this ninja out here, and he got a milk dud head, so he probably did it. After meeting off Facebook, as seen here on the Church Without Walls website, he's listed as the Eldridge Campus Minister. The things that we look at for cases like these are essentially four things. They go another attorney. If y'all don't know, y'all ninjas getting locked up. They locking y'all the hell up out I'm here. I'm not going to say what race, what people. We know I can't say that. They love locking y'all ninjas up on the two, three things you can't control. Number one, your uh, salami discipline. Number two, child support. Number three, goofy ass loans that they got. y'all got to pay back. All right. They love locking y'all ninjas up. All right. Let's continue here. Is the defendant infected and how can we prove it? Did he know he was infected? And, you know, how do we prove and Do we have evidence of that? Not only does Murphy say they were able to prove those facts, but also that Wes lied when asked about having. We spoke to says it uh, was a. OK, so he lied about having herpes. Yeah, I mean, that'll get you, man. You guys got to If you guys got herp dirt, you got HIV and all of that stuff. You got to be careful out here and and not trying to trying to make sure you don't. You're just trying to get the sex and not tell people. And, of course, if you're a man of God, you should not be clapping your parishioner's cheeks, although it's been going on for since forever. In fact, the the pre Rosa Parks, the pre Rosa Parks, her name is Claudette Coven. 
she was the Rosa Parks before Rosa Parks. Um, she was the one, the young teenage black woman who was dark skinned, darker than darker than the trillion midnights. She was the one who actually got the case going for the Montgomery boycott and they were going to use her, but then she came up pregnant and she was 15 and dark skinned. And they were like, we can't use this one. She's dark skinned. Not only that, she's a teenage pregnant woman. Not only that, allegedly the man who impregnated her was a white pastor. So they're like, probably can't use her. Let's get this old light skinned woman. And then we'll orchestrate a bus cop, a boycott. Yeah. Because we'll get her kicked off and then all of that stuff. So, uh, you guys got to watch out. Pastors and churches been going in on their parishioners for a long time. This is why we call them Deacon Clap Cheeks. Let's go to the next story. We're going to Arizona. And uh, guys, it, 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 when they say, when they say, this is somebody's daughter, you know, this is somebody's daughter. Hey, man, that's somebody's daughter. Well, we found, we found somebody's daughter and we found the father to go with him. All right. I'm happy. Listen to this. This is a pure unadulterated straggle here. Let's play the video. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Rice? Huh? You know Matt Rice? Yeah, I know he Matt. He follows you. That's my buddy. Oh, my God. I love him. Tell him I want to get with him, too. <laughs> okay. Good Lord. So I much. love Matt Rice. <laughs> That's my daughter. What He's a do? great comedian. You got any more crushes you want to holler at? Um, Joe Burrow? James Conner, Joe Burrow. Um... Who else we got in there? Any oh, big black humanity. linebacker? Oh my God. Yeah, I oh love them all. Humanity. Any big black linebacker? Holla at your girl. Yes. All right, in about four years, if you Google big black linebacker plows white woman from Arizona, we might see her again. Just oh, my God. That's somebody's daughter out here. Get him, daddy. I'm telling you, my. I'm telling you guys. I'm just here to tell you right now, brothers. It's a new day out here. Yes, it is. It's a new day, and the daddies can't do what daddies can do with these teenagers. Y'all can't whip them into shape out here. Yo, this woman wants that bang yang. And that's a minor, too. This is a minor. This looks like somebody's teenage daughter. She ready for the JUCO in a couple of years. Yo, she already gone. I know, man. I know y'all think these kids don't know what they're doing here, these adolescents. Did you see her, by the way? Her dad was right there. He couldn't do nothing about it. He had to sit there like, he had to sit there like and take it. Dad had to did sit there and take it. Let's play it again. Look at Pops. And we got to talk about these weak white, white male fathers, man. The weak tail ass ninjas with these spoiled brat ass kids, man. Yo, let's get to it. Clean Matt living. Rice? Huh? You know Matt Rice? Yeah, I know, he man. follows you. Uh, man, this girl, man, got to be 16 years old, 15 to 16. And there goes weak ass daddy right here. That's my buddy. Oh, my God. I love him. Tell him I want to get with him, too. I want to get two. <laughs> Look at daddy. Daddy's like, oh, wait a minute. Daddy's like, hey, yo, chill, son. Hey, yo. Get with him, too. Oh, man. She's got more to say. <laughs> okay. Good Lord. So I much. love that, right? <laughs> Look at daddy. Oh, man. Daddy, what's going on? Get him, Daddy. Hey, man. <laughs> it's cold. Look at Dad like, ah, oh, shit. I told you I've had interactions like this, man, so I know. I know what's going on out here in these streets. In these streets? They loose out here. They loose out here, and she had more to say. Let's go ahead and see what she had to say here. <laughs> that's my daughter. What do I got? Yeah, that's your daughter. That's your daughter, and you know your daughter for these. In these streets. Yikes. Okay. He can't do nothing about it. Great comedian. You got any more crushes you want to holler at? Um, Joe Burrow? James Conner, Joe Burrow. Oh, my goodness. What is going on out here? This is crazy. Oh, the humanity. Um, who else we got in there? Damn, who else can get these yikes? Look out. In these streets. Look out. Any big black linebacker? Oh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it ain't what it used to be. Look at daddy's face. <laughs> Yo, man, it's it's a cold, evil-ass world we live in. It's an evil world we live in. It's an evil world, man. Back in the day, you know, not, you couldn't call out. This little girl couldn't call out big black linebacker. Now they could call him out and get right and get right in their DMs. Boy, you better protect your neck. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I love them all. Oh, my. Any big black linebacker. Look, how, look, look. Oh, my goodness. What in the? Hey, yo, chill, son. Hey, yo. Man, man. <laughs> Jesus. Man. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, bitch. She like, come get me with the throttle. What is this, guys? Oh, my goodness, man. This is just absolutely. Trying. This is crazy. She's like, come get you some. Man, we done. You got to ring the bell on these people, man. The dark side. I didn't told y'all. I didn't warn y'all about this, but y'all will not believe me. Y'all would not believe me. Already milk of magnesia. I'll let your girl. Yeah, she said, yeah. Yeah, about yeah she said, yes. Where daddy at? Four years, if you Google big black linebacker plows white woman from Arizona, we might see her again. You know Just clean Matt living. Rice? Huh? You know Matt Rice? Yeah, I know he Matt. He follows you. That's my buddy. Oh my God, I love him. Tell him I want to get with him too. <laughs> okay. Good Lord. So I love <laughs> Matt Rice. <laughs> That's my daughter. What do I He's a great comedian. You got any more crushes you want to holler at? Um, Joe Burrow? James Conner, Joe Burrow. Um, who else we got in there? Any big black linebacker? Oh yeah, I love them all. Any big black linebacker? Holla at your girl. Oh. All right, in about four years, if you Google big black linebacker plows white woman from Arizona, we might see her again. Oh, Jesus. Man, it's time to pray. It's time to pray to all fathers. Moment of silence to all fathers out here. And I forgot to change my banner again. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Pray to, pray to all fathers. Pray to all men trying to be a part of their kid's life. It's a different day and age out here. The age of innocence is gone. I told y'all the age of innocence is gone. Y'all won't believe me. Then just pray for all these ninjas that got these girls in their DMs. Do not catch a case because they out here throwing it around here like pancakes. And it's going to be an easy one for you, but you still commit the crime. We pray for all you ninjas out here. You no discipline having ninjas that will throw they Johnson down this gutter and end up in the poke. Pray for all the ninjas, the BBC ninjas that's just coming out here. Imagine what she doing in the high school. This is crazy. All right, these hoes winning. Let's get to these straggles right here. Apparently, this is a part of someone's Instagram story or something. I'm not sure. And uh, here we go. There's a sister right there. There she is. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting evicted tomorrow. I'm $700 show. Please help me. God bless. Okay, remember. <laughs> About a year and a half ago, they were saying these hoes is winning. And I told you they wasn't winning. But we do tell you that there are some people out here that can fix this, that bind. And let's go ahead and check it out. Oh, hey. Is that Tanya Loss over there? Hey, Percy Earl. How have you been? Oh, I was out here just taking it one day at a time. You know, it's been a while since I seen you. Last time I seen you was about two years ago, and that was at the NAACP Buffalo Wang Brunch. That's right, I remember. Well, what's going on with you, baby? You don't look too happy right now. Well, Percy Earl, I just lost my job today, and my car was repossessed. Now I'm about to get evicted soon. Ooh, Lord, that is tub. What you gonna do, baby? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know. I'm in a bind, Percy Earl. Well, Percy Earl can help you get up out that bind, baby. I sure enough can help you do that. For real? So, what I gotta do, Percy Earl? Oh, well, uh, um, <laughs> you know. Uh-oh. You One hand washes the other. Oh, no. As they say, you wash my back, I, I wash your own. Mm. If you get to my drift. Oh, I'm in a bind, Nate. We got out here, man. I got money. Percy Earl, man, that's disgraceful. That's despicable to take advantage of uh the girls that are in a bind out here. I'm in a bind, Nate. All right, ninjas. Your rent's due, motherfucker. Shout out to Tariq Nasheed and uh the adventures of uh the Bucci Bear and Percy Earl. You're disgraceful. I got money, but I understand Percy Earl. Damn, daddy. I understand, I understand how you doing your business out here. Okay, daddy. I understand how it works. You know, you got to fix these people's binds out here. But don't get your, don't, don't, you know. 
always protect if one hand washes the other. If you wash your own back, uh, I washes yours, you know. <laughs> fixes that bind. All right. The bind fixes LLC in the building. What do we got here? More straggles. Let's play the video right here. This guy's physique out of 10. Is that four? <laughs> it so is. I'd give it an eight. Look at the hair. Is that not him? Seven and a half. How about this guy? Uh, I like that. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Ten. I love that. <laughs> you like it better than the other guy? Yeah, I do, yeah. But the other guy was Thor. Was it? <laughs> I told it was. you! Is right? That? Thank you! You recognize the Who's tattoo? That? Is that you? Oh! <laughs> That's you? <laughs> my G! That's my dude. All the way to the gym, all day, every day. Niggas always gotta show they teeth. All right, so let's, this is a lot to unpack here. And these are some of the things that young men, you know, I'm here, your elder statesman, to show you there's a lot to unpack in this video. Now, these are some of the things that we've been telling you about and teaching you that you're trying to overcome out here in the real world. First of all, let's talk about this. You have a very, very average woman. The, the paler skin woman is fairly average. And then you have a slightly above average, uh, the thicker Pillsbury biscuit can girl here. What you're seeing is them rating two people. One person is a celebrity. The other person is the person holding the microphone, the swole Asian guy. And you're going to see two things happen. Number one, they're showing you uh, completely ripped bodies which the one woman who is the average woman, the below average woman, she's trying to hold frame. The other girl is like, hey, I'm going to tell you the truth. Even when the girl tells the truth, the other girl's like, hey, you're not holding frame. Number two, the celebrity that she says she recognizes, once confirmed that it was celebrity, she wanted to change the ranking. She said it was a seven. Then when she learned it was a celebrity, she said, oh, wow, maybe I have a different opinion. Number three, number four, is that the person that's standing in front of them that she rated higher than the celebrity, she tried to downgrade once she figured out it was just regular him. Then, going along, then what she tried to say is, uh, uh, sorry, then the black guy comes in and gives the guy more credit for achieving his physique, which both of these women have no physique to, uh, to, to basically try to, you can't even rate them physique-wise. They're all sloppy yogurt. The one big ups that he got was from the black man. He came in and was like, congratulations for achieving almost the impossible, the 1% body. But the 1% body for the woman was not enough. Mm. There's so much. To, and, and one thing I always tell you, when you get into fitness, when you get into achievement, most of the people who are going to give you credit are other men. And this is a sad thing. This is a sad thing. Women are not going to give you credit for this shit. I know you think they're going to melt because they see your car and your house and your jewelry and your, and your body and your physique. Mostly men are the ones that are going to big up you when you achieve these things. Yeah, women are going to use you for it or come along for the ride or say, okay, I'll fit in right here. But the biggest congratulations he got was from another male. And the women couldn't even give him credit when they ranked him higher initially, these people out here, man, I'm telling you, I've cracked the code on these people. And guys, you're breaking your back. You're busting your ass out here to try to impress these women. They're not to be impressed. They're not to be satisfied. They're not to be made happy. That's not you. You should not take take your life and format it for them because they're simply unappreciated. They're unappreciative. They, they really just take you for granted no matter what. So we'll play it back now that you can see it. Let's play it back, and I'll have to pause it now. You, I already played it all the way through. I'm going to pause it and then teach just so you can see it. Okay, so here you go. Uh, Asian, we're going to call him Ricky Tan. It's right here. And this is a lot of American women. Now let's take a look here. Let's blow this up. There's Ricky Tan with the 1% Asian body. And there's sloppy yogurt tattooed up woman right here. With the cow nose, and then there's there's the fake tan girl over here with the busted Pillsbury biscuit can. Like both of, both of these women inherently are unimpressive, but he is physically more impressive than them. Let's let's continue here. Rate this guy's physique out of ten. Is that Thor? All right, and that is that Thor. <laughs> That's not what I ask. I said rate him out of one to ten. 
<laughs> it's so it. I'd give it an eight. Look at the hair. Is that not him? All right, she won't answer. She won't answer. Uh, so she's one of these women that she's she's asked three questions in between him asking her one. So she's a deceitful manipulator. Ma manipulator. Let's continue. Seven and a half. Seven and a half for Thor. I mean, obviously that's a CGI CGI body. Seven and a half. Now I would be curious as to what she would rate herself, because Thor in the movie was a very much the that pot that body was impossible to get. Seven and a half. Let's continue. How about this guy? Uh, I like that. <laughs> All right, so she's the honest one. Seven. <laughs> All right, and look, seven, and take a look at the attitude. See, these are the things you guys are got to watch out. She says seven and then scratches her head. She thinks she's better than what she is. And a lot of guys, you're trying to impress women like this. Stop it. You know, get some help out here. So she's just trying to hold frame. She's not being honest. She hates men. She hates the fact that she looks very basic. So she got to tell you about it. Here we go. That's <laughs> All right. And so look, as she says 10, I like it. Look at the reaction of this, the hater friend. Love that. <laughs> you see this? Why, why is she mad? <laughs> like, why is she mad that the woman says, I like both of these bodies? Again, what she's trying to communicate is you're not holding frame. Girl, girl, you, got, you can't just be folding like this. Guys got to understand, women's they have a girl code, and she's breaking code right now. Let's continue. You like it better than the other guy. Yeah, I do, yeah. But the other guy was Thor. Was it? <laughs> All right, and so now the other guy was Thor. Oh, wait a minute. Let me reconsider. Because in front of me, I would have actually been, went after Thor. Let me reconsider. It's a celebrity. Okay. I told you. Is that, right? Thank you. You recognize the tattoo? That? Is that you? All right, and so here we go. Is that you? That they rate it slightly higher than Thor. Now, the hater bitch got to walk off. <laughs> now, watch this. Now, this is simple. In life, gentlemen, in life, when you achieve things, the only people that are going to give you credit for the work you've done are people that can understand the work that you've done. Which this man knows, this man has the 1% body. He's achieved that. Whether he's taken Trin or Diana Bowl or Anavar or any of these uh, assistants, it still takes work. Men are going to give you either the most hate or they're going to give you the, the uh, validation that you truly deserve. These women could not stop for one moment. And these are average women to give this ninja the credit that he deserves. They had to run off. They had to play their little games. And when we talk about people playing games, these are the games, the little girl games that women play. Now, when they get older, about 45 and 50, then her, her uh, varicose vein having ass will be over there rubbing his chest. When he's about 45, you're going to have old, when he, well, sorry. When a woman's about 45, she's going to bring her varicose vein ass, her gremlin hand ass over there, trying to get all over him, telling him how sexy he is. That's just how they work because she has nothing to lose and she has everything to gain. But these other women, I could do better than that. And here comes the ninja to give him credit. That's you? <laughs> my G. <laughs> That's my dude. All the way to the gym, all day, every day. So interesting there. Interesting there. That's just what it is. That's just what it is. And I actually been talking about that, and that proves Sorry. it. And I think I have one more straggle and sniggle. And uh, it's going to be this one right here. There is a woman. I think this woman is Sorry. known to uh, do Riz on the internet. I'm not sure. But it's a little Filipina, Asian-looking woman. And I think what she does is she walks up to men and she makes them uncomfortable by cold approaching them. So here's what she's going to do. She's going to meet her match. And we have a Rick Ross-looking ninja and a whole bunch of ninjas that look like they from, uh, uh, from Nelly, a Nelly concert. Mm. What is it called? What was Nelly's group called? The Lunatics? Looks like they're going with the St. Lunatics. In the Nelly concert with Rick Ross going on here. Let's see how this ends up for this young woman. Excuse me, guys. Excuse us. Okay. Keep her with us. I am now. Okay, what's your name? Laura, what's your name? Marquise. You're fine Marquise. Oh, thank you. You like Chung Lee. You want to go street fighter? No. She's Never. beautiful. Oh, thank you. Hey. How old are you? Uh, 21. You legal? <laughs> you like black guys? Kind of? 
Oh, you wanna take a picture? <laughs> you got the man? I do. You here? No, he's not. <laughs> All right, and so what you've seen here, apparently everybody's like, hey, she actually had the tables turned on her because you had the ninja that was applying pressure, cold approach Mac Ninja, who he was doing a little bit too much. Y'all ninjas got the girl right there, man. You had her. You had her and you opened your mouth with all of your objections, 50 questions, man. Damn. Mac Ninjas, chill out, man. What is going on? Chill, you chill, had her. Chill, you had her, and chill, then you had to get chill, thirsty. Chill. What's wrong with you guys, man? Look, man, know when to say. Know when to say less. Know when to say less. This is what they want y'all out here doing. This is the mouthpiece ninja. Yo, brother. Yeah, that brother stopped. You had her. You had her. You had her. What did he get? You had me at, hey, I'm going to stand right here. Now he did way too much. God damn, 50 questions. You just skinny pop pop. All right, let's play it again. Excuse me, guys. Excuse us. Okay. Keep her with us. I am now. Okay, what's your name? Laura, what's your name? Marquise. You fine Marquise? Oh, thank you. You like Chung Lee. I mean, this is an example of doing way too much. All right, in my opinion, the person who's probably going to get after her is the dude with the hat, cockwords, and back. All right, because he already opened in his mouth way too much. First of all, you gave her instant validation. So here's, here's the funny thing about it. Here's the funny thing. A lot of these guys will blame simps for ruining the marketplace. And I'm here to tell you, sure, that might be the case. But also, these guys ruin the dating marketplace. Because he comes in immediate attention, immediate no Johnson control, immediate validation, immediate, oh, you pretty, you my type, immediately. She did absolutely nothing but stand there. And immediately you put her up here. All to get some puss, I get it. But you immediately went the and no, these guys don't think this is simping. You went immediately and put her up there with the validate. You didn't need to. She stood right there. She already quote unquote chose. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Then you were just turned all of your attention from your mates to her. And you fell for the trap, by the way. She did this on purpose. She t intentionally targeted these guys. And they just would be like, I got the mouthpiece. Oh, this ain't the mouthpiece, guys. This is some straight up hoflation. No. She's beautiful. Oh. There it is. There's two. There's two. And then in between that was Chung Lee, which I'm assuming he has a thing for on Street Fighter. And let's just take a look at the girl. Let's just take a look at the girl. I mean, come on, guys. Yeah, that brother's starving. She's good looking. I mean, she ain't beautiful. She's none of those things that he actually said here. Now, he could have ended it right there. But, of course, he got the mouthpiece. <laughs> he got the mouthpiece, right? Coach, I got the mouthpiece. Okay, let me see the mouthpiece, son. Here we go. Oh, thank you. Hey, how do you? Uh, 21. You legal? <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus. Yeah, that brother's starving. Yes, sir, brother. <laughs> You're legal. I mean, really? You, th this is doing too much. This is what I don't like. This this shit I don't like. Guys, do not do this shit. You're not cool. I, this is what I call the guy that thinks he's so charismatic. Oh, I know how to talk to women. Ninja, do, don't you know less is more when it comes to women? Like, mystery is more. When they're curious, you pique your curiosity. It's more. When they're like, I really want to get to know you, it's more. Not giving up everything. You didn't need to push everything out there. What else do you have to tell her? What else would you have to tell her? All right, let's continue. You like black guys? <laughs> oh, my God. You like, not that you like, but this is a ninja that never deals with women outside of his race. Yeah, that brother's starving. Yes, sir, brother. <laughs> hey, man, just assume Generation Z does not have the racial hangups that previous generations before them have. Gen Z is wide open when it comes to race and all of that stuff. There's really no limitations. Number, number two, she's obviously comfortable around you. If she wasn't or wasn't talking to you, yeah, man, why would you even go to the black guy thing? Oh, I'm going to give you the BBC. She's already comfortable. So, yeah, she's, she's cool with it. I bet you like black guy type ninja. This is so low grade ass. This is low-grade attempt at trying to be the Mac. This is not the mouthpiece. All right, let's continue. Oh, you want to take a picture? You want to take a picture? Shh. 
These guys will swear up and down that they got the mouthpiece. I mean, they'll swear up and down. I'm telling you, don't do any of this shit. This is actually lowballing. Do you want to take a picture? Lord, have mercy. We must stay focused, brothers. We must stay focused. <sighs> Dude, this is insane. I've never seen somebody give me a classic example. And as you can see, the men that are next to him, I mean, the, the, his partners, they haven't said nothing. They haven't said anything. And the reason why somebody said this is harassment, it, it is now because you already had her. I mean, in theory, she's doing a video. But you, in theory, already had her. She stood right next to you. It was a wrap. You all had to say less. You could have closed without saying all of this stuff. But he's super duper thirsty with it. Yeah, that's and these are the guys that try to say, man, that's how you talk, man. That's how you talk. No, it's not. This is not how you do it. <laughs> you got a man? You got a man. Does it matter right now? Close the deal, Mr. Mac Daddy, Mr. Uh, head Rap. What does it matter if she has a man right now? That wouldn't matter to me for a long time. You got a man, okay? This is somebody, and she's not, the thing is, she's not giving him anything back, so he doesn't know when to back off. Oh, well, one of these things will work. I do. Is he here? He is he here? Oh, goodness. See, if I was your man, I would be here. I'd never let you out my sight type ninja. All right, here we go. No, he's not. <laughs> then he here. And look at the extension. Then I, and she gives him nothing back. And obviously, you have to take into consideration that she knows this is a plan. Right. She did this on purpose, right? So this is a video. And now you don't have a man. And then if your man's not here, then I'm your man. <laughs> So she go in, yeah, he goes in the dirty macking. Cause yeah, I have a man. Okay, if he ain't here, I'm your man today. Ay, yay, ay. Mouthpiece ninjas, right? And here's the thing. Here's here's what I'm gonna tell you. This is why I don't encourage this behavior. Because he's gonna think he did something. Because, hey, I ain't scared of talking. I ain't scared of rejection. It this had nothing to do with talking and rejection. This actually inflated her ego or sense of self-worth. And caught her off guard a little bit because she was supposed to she was supposed to get him in a, a interesting position and it backfired. But what did you get out of this? Zero. Zero. Yeah, the last question he was gonna get was, "Can I get a hug?" That was next. That was gonna that was gonna be the next question. But well, well let me get a hug. Ask Ninja, man. Do not be these guys, man. I know people will tell you cold approach and shoot your shot and talk and don't fear rejection. But this does the opposite. In my opinion, this does the exact opposite of what you would want to do in terms of hoflation, in terms of what is pimping and simping and all of that stuff. These want to be ass Mac pimp ninjas watching too many pimp movies. And then really they haven't done anything. In fact, what they've done more is inflated the ego of the woman with their 97 out of 100 rejections. All right, I think this is actually a disgrace. Anyway, straggle and sniggle theater. Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast stick, you can get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride. Yeah, man, see, I'll be out here talking to these girls, man, because you won't be out here with your mouthpiece. I got it. I got the mouthpiece, coach. You ain't got no mouthpiece. All right, I'll be out here doing it, man. I be getting shot down 97% of the time. <laughs> All right, it's great. And it still don't affect me. Shout out to our brother here, Big Buck Steel in the building. He says Adam was cursed for, for hearkening to the woman. What does that mean? I'm not sure what that means, but uh, maybe you can help me. Joe K says CGA tells no lies. Men, look out. There's barbecue in here. There's barbecue in CG, C, wait, CJ says the IRS is coming for those OnlyFan models deposits over a certain amount on Cash App and PayPal, and the crypto NFT boys, he says, you know they didn't file their taxes right, especially the OnlyFans models that don't think too far ahead. And uh, if you are a content creator, even a YouTuber or any of these things, I would be saving some money to be paying off these people because, in my opinion, I'm not sure. But I think these people, you know, these IRS and uh, all of these people, they're building a case against you from years back. 
And, uh, you know, they're they're going back to 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. And they won't talk to you until five years from now. <laughs> they ain't going to hit you up until five years from now. I mean, that's if you're lucky. So then you got like two, three, four, five years of this activity. And they're going to come back and say, you owe this plus interest and penalties. I'm just letting you know. It's it's kind of probably probably going to be uh, it's going to be a thing. And OnlyFans girls, I know they won't have no money. They ain't going to have no money to show for it. And they're going to get got because they ain't going to have it all spent up. I'm going to tell you, if you're a content creator, save your money. Save your money for years. Just, just save a whole bag. All right. Um, shout out to Freemitis. Shout out to you, man. And he says, uh, he says nothing. Steven Russell says, Coach, did you hear about the spike in the lesbian divorce rate? Something I predicted as well because I know lesbians be fighting each other. I got to check that out. Jabari says, why are there a lot of baby moms and baby dads? I think there should be a show on the psychology behind that. There's something definitely disgraceful about that activity, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, there's nothing but the devil involved in that. And it says nothing but the truth says watching from Nairobi, Kenya. Shout out to my brothers out there, brother. All right, shout out to Sam. And uh, and he says, shout out to the replay coach gang. I love to watch CGA's classic, but recently noticed you are revamping your channel. Can you briefly mention if the classics will be available to still watch again? Yes, I have everything saved and everything is going to be available. Like the first five years of my content will be available. Not on this platform. It's going to be available on another platform, but I'm revamping everything. So give me a few weeks to get through the revamping process, but a brother's got to do what a brother's got to do. Shout out to Moose Hefner says, I did what Lamar did after breaking up and living with my ex until the lease was up. It was torture some days. She would be looking good and I couldn't even get that piece leave. She eventually started dating someone else and it was miserable. I wouldn't wish that pain on my worst enemy. Yeah, because you broke up. If she starts bringing other men into your house, Guys, this is just, right, this is, nah, man, I wouldn't suggest doing that. Shout out to Jamie Hoffman says, hit the damn like button. Man, hit that like button. We almost at the main event. Shout out to Macaroni Tony. Can you play that clip of the officer, officer lick him low again asking for a friend? He says, no. Yeah, you starving. Yeah, that brother's starving. Yes, sir, brother. <laughs> All right. You like them big buff chiseled jaw chicas. Be real mahogany, Cove. Coach, life is hard. Imagine working, hustling all the time to impress broke 304s, free agent lifestyle for life, and it's interesting. Uh, somebody put a meme up that you guys have probably have already seen. It says a woman never considers herself broke. She just believes she's dating the wrong men. God dang. A woman never believes that she's broke. She just simply believes that she's dating the wrong men. Yeah. I got money. Right? Her her solution is eventually, maybe if I pivoted and start dating the right men, I wouldn't be broke. Jabari says, elaborate on how marriage is for the impoverished because it's necessary. Right? It's necessary. That's where you see most arranged marriages. That's when you see more economically uh, feasible marriages. I mean, it's absolutely necessary that you have partnerships that can get you through it and or be in a polygamous relationship. It's a it's definitely something that people will do and partner you up because that's like one of these people needs the other, if not both. If not both. Anyway, somebody said that was me. Oh, shout out to you. Yeah, a woman never believes she's broke. She just believes she's dating the wrong men. All right, shout out to No Government Name SD says Coach the recent news about Jada, sister, sister, and Travis Kelsey's ex girlfriend. It's funny because it's just women putting their business out there, letting people comment and then responding that they are unprotected and that it is men's fault. Shout out to damn. Yeah. It is all Jermaine's fault. It's always Jermaine's fault. All right. Yeah. Bad, 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 bad news out here. And but I love it. One of the things I've been telling you is that, you know, we see these videos of a lot of women and uh, they talk like this and then we're like, see, see. But I, I want you guys to understand. We want them to talk. I want them. I want them to keep showing me exactly who they are. 
Now, not all women believe many of the things that we see on the internet, but even the most simplest thing, like Travis Kelsey's first ex that came out, that's exactly what I want to see. I want to see bitter-ass women like that expressing themselves, trying to play the victim, calling him a narcissist. Like, he came out of the woodworks 10 years later calling someone a narcissist. She still hasn't gotten over the fact that she lost her meal ticket. I want them to keep talking. First of all, it keeps me making content. Let them talk, gentlemen. Never get on here. Hey, never get on here. Never get on here and get, let, let me just say this. Because people do this. When, they, when a woman says something on the internet, thank her for saying it. You'll get in the comment section and bash the woman. You'll be like, oh, you crazy bitch. See, that's why. No, no. What you say is, thank you for telling me exactly what I thought about women. Thank you. Give me all the information. You're telling me exactly what I need to know, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> right? But y'all want to bash them and call them all kind of names? I'm telling you, the worst thing you can do, and this tells me where you are mentally, is bash women for expressing themselves. Don't you know that's counterproductive? It's counterproductive. Let them talk. Talk, sister. We need them. Because I used to make content, and I didn't have none of these videos. I didn't have TikTok. I didn't have Instagram. Now these women, these new women running around here using TikTok as a diary. Thank the Lord. Come on out. Tell me. Let them tell on themselves. And guys, you guys, yes. Uh, you guys will argue with women. Like I heard, I've seen a couple of videos. I did a video on the Cheesecake Factory girl. Which, you know, you can watch the video on the Ask Coach Greg Adams channel. But I saw a lot of guys talking about, I would tell this bitch this and I would kick her out the car. I'm like, you guys are showing exactly why. <laughs> you become the victim. I'm sorry, you become the, you become the uh, perpetrator. Last thing you do, need to do, is argue with women. They know, a lot of them know that they're pieces of shit. So that's not even trying to tell them and make them aware that they're shitty when they're already kind of shitty already. They already know that they're shitty. You don't have to remind them. They already know. And it's whatever their false bravado is when they come out here and be like, I'm this and I'm gorgeous. They know they shitty. They know their circumstances. You don't got to remind them. But then what you'll do is you'll kick her out the car and then you'll give her all the ammunition she needs to get your ass. And she will because that's what type of person she is. So she'll file the police report. She'll take your license plate. She'll get the model and make of your car. She'll get where you live. And bitch, you'll be the victim, you goofy ass. You'll be the, I'm sorry, she'll be the victim. You left her out there. You left her out in the homeless encampment. How could you leave a woman out there? She ain't protected. What did she do? What she did was not bad. She didn't deserve that. Stop. Stop. Stop with those reactions. Stop. There's no need to call them name. What you do is the best thing you can do is give they ass silence and walk away. But you constantly trying to prove your point to make you because you some people believe that you think you're the bigger man by cussing a woman out. Can I tell you something? I want you to listen to this quote. Listen to this quote. Never argue with the fool because from a distance, no one can tell the difference. No one can tell the difference between who's the fool and who's not. There's a phrase that goes something like that. So while you're arguing with the bitch that you think is the fool, from a distance, no one can tell between the two. You're both fools. If you've ever taken a firearms training class, if you take in a firearm training class and they will tell you that if a person has a firearm on the other person, you cannot tell who's the victim or who's the suspect. You can't tell. So let's just say we do this on our CCW. So let's say I was just chilling in a parking lot and I see a person holding a firearm against another person. Do I know who's the subject? Do I know who's the perpetrator? Who's the victim? Can you tell? But if I say, oh, and overreact, oh, that person has a gun on the other person, pop, and I pop them. What if they were the victim? In many cases, they could have been the victim and retaliated against the suspect. Somebody tried to rob you without 
at, that, that didn't have a firearm and the other person just pulled that firearm. Now I turn and look and I say, hey, that person has a gun on them. Pop. But they were the victim the entire time. Sometimes you can't tell. Sometimes you don't have the, all the information. So from a distance, it might look like something, but it actually isn't true. So you might think arguing with a woman in public makes you look like the man. You look like a fool out here, in my opinion. It's dumb. It's dumb. You're giving them attention that they do not deserve. None at all. They're, you're giving them attention that they do not deserve. So be careful when you're trying to make a point against women. Because you think just yelling and screaming at them and kicking them out your car is the thing, is the solution, when most of the time it's going to cause you more problems. You have nothing to prove. Not only that, you probably have way more to lose than she does. You have way more to lose than she does. So why would you lose yourself to try to argue with a trashy bitch? I'm telling you guys, I'm giving you life-saving advice. You get with a woman like that, first of all, take the L because you didn't vet her out. Most of that conversation in that skit was vettable information. It was pretty clear what it was. He could have vetted that out, but he made the mistake. He didn't have salami discipline, and he ended up in the car with a woman who overvalued herself. And he made a lot of mistakes that he could have covered in that skit, which I went over that in the Ask Coach Greg Adams uh, channel video. But, guys, when you get in that situation, in that situation, just say I took the L. I took the L. Let me move on. Shout out to no government name says I'm paying two thirds of. Oh, this is the guy with the girlfriend. This is the guy with the girlfriend that he lives with. He says, I pay two thirds of the rent and 500 a month for groceries. She told me that I wasn't doing anything for her. Well, you know, that's that's a woman. She wanted me to help her clean up, even though that wasn't a part of our agreement. The reason why I agreed to pay more was because she was supposed to take care of all the cooking and cleaning. So therefore, that's the bait and switch. I actually tell you guys all the time, never take a woman's word as their word because everybody knows that they're able to change their mind at any point. They live on changing their mind. And I honor the fact that they can change their mind. That's why I never make an agreement with one. They're always going to change their mind. I changed my mind. Okay, well, then you'll never be making, I'll never make an agreement with you that is verbal. Even a contractual agreement with women is almost useless. They'll rip up the contract right in front of you. And they act like ripping it up means that it went away, which it doesn't, because we all got copies and digital copies. But stop making verbal agreements with these women because they can change their mind and there's nothing you can do about it. Not because... They're bad people, but because you'll make a verbal agreement and then you'll move in, but then you have a loss that you can't make up. See, that's the reason now. Because people are like, why, you think we're going to lie? No, look, I have a loss that I can't make up now because I had a verbal agreement because you changed your mind and you have the ability to change your mind. And she did. By the way, uh, <clears throat> anybody that's making these agreements, as let's use our brother for an example here, guys. You're making these agreements with women thinking that they're going to follow through. They never follow through on their agreements. Never. Not in the history of the world have they ever followed through on, any, on an agreement. Why are you keep falling for this? <laughs> All right. And even that agreement is flimsy. Well, you going to cook and clean like that? Guys. Why? Why would you, why would you, you can hire people to cook and clean for cheaper than this. I can hire people to cook and clean that are cheaper than moving a woman in. <laughs> like significantly cheaper. I know a lot of you guys want to have this fantasy that you'll have a woman cooking over you and taking care of you. That's temporary. Every woman can do, this is what women do when they do this. I'm going to tell you because I understand women. They're going to do it, and then they're going to think they're getting the short end of the stick. This could take two days or two months, but eventually, a woman's favorite phrase is, this is not fair. So when it comes to this, that was what you agreed with, but when she starts doing it for a period of time, 
she starts seeing where she's not getting the best end of the deal. So she'll say, this is not fair. Well, you don't do this. Well, then you already go back. Hey, listen, we agreed that I paid the majority of the rent and I buy the food. You agreed to cook and clean. And then she will always find a but, but, but. It's what they do. Now, if I agree to pay a bitch that don't live in my house to come clean up and I say, we agreed that you're going to clean and I have a contractual agreement that that's all there is, she can't say nothing. She could just stop cleaning. But eventually she will find out that she's not getting a good part of the deal. And that's normally going to come with, if you say in your agreement, hey, you're going to clean up and cook. Well, even wives and husbands go through this. Even wives and husbands go through this, which the wife will look at it. He's providing protection and provision. He's not getting credit for it, but he's doing that. Then even a soccer mom, I showed you clips where they have a nice house. They have a maid and a nanny. But what will happen is while she's cooking or cleaning after you're cooking, she's watching you sit on the couch. She's watching you sit in the couch. She's going to feel a certain way about this. She's going to feel this is unfair. Why are you just sitting over here while I'm doing this work? Now, she's going to disregard any other work that you did to get to this point. This is how women work. They're in the moment. They're loyal to their feelings. At some point, she'll have a problem with this. She's going to be like, this is crazy. And your dumb ass is going to be up there with your feet all up under your furniture, holding your beer, watching your football game, laughing and sniggling, listening to CGA. The bitch going to go haywire. She's going to go, she's going to blow a, uh, a circuit. She's going to blow a circuit. She cannot handle that. Don't think you about to take a nap. She about to be opening and closing cabinets, slamming doors, vacuuming, banging pots and pans around. Stomping from one room to the next. Mm. Dropping pans and forks and knives on the floor. All right, she's going to be slamming cabinet doors. It's going to be disgusting. This because they're children. I mean, they're really literally, you got to treat them like they're children. And I'm not saying that to belittle them, but that's how they act. They're acting their emotions and they're not trying to listen to you. If they feel a certain way right now, that's what they're going to do. Anybody's ever experienced this, press one. And every man that is cohabitated probably has experienced something like this. It's what they do. Your mama even does this to you. Your mama even does this. Your mama even does this. This is all passive aggressive behavior. Your mama start humming. That's your mama. She just start humming church hymns and shit. And you like, Ma. <laughs> Ma, yo, do you realize you're humming over my damn program? I'm just sitting here. You're just humming. <laughs> Old Negro spiritual. She can start humming on your ass. Oh, what? Yeah, am I humming? Yes, bitch. <laughs> Your old mama. You like what? It's bu- Wait, yeah, bitch. Yeah, bitch. So, guys, this is how this is how they work. I'm just giving you pregame, or I'm giving you a review session. They don't act any differently. Shout out to Random Thoughts. I'm a researcher, data analysis. Don't teach, so won't get in trouble for dealing with students. JUCO is global. Even in Africa, free agent lifestyle for life. Shout out to the JUCO, man. I love it. Indeed. Touch on them. Put hands on hips. Shout out to Arthur DS1 says CGA. He says, where your where have your old streams gone? What happened? Where did all the men I already go? addressed that. I didn't realize that many people were watching them. <laughs> Adam Andre 413 Percy Earl LOL. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. That's terrible. Shout out to Dennis B in the building for the coffee. The objective hustler says tip for the word. He says only people who understand the work will congratulate you for the work. Facts. AC, that Ling Ling video further affirms cold approach is dummy. 
They always shooting content. He says, so they have to shoot you down and humiliate you for views. That's part of the game. That's part of the game. Oh, don't worry about all that, Ninja. Ninja, don't worry about all that. You just try to, you just, did you? <laughs> I love them ninjas. Ninja, you worried about all that? You worried about them recording you and the sexual harassment charges? Ninja, don't worry about all that. You worry about rejection, all that? Yeah. Anyway, Dennis B says, on the topic of less is more, everybody check out 40s anti manifesto. I don't even know what that is. Shout out to you. Let me do three more, and then we'll get back on the show. JC says, me and my Mastodon played a game last night called Touch the Bed. If, you, if I could touch the bed with my hands and feet while on top of her, I win a prize. So far, I'm on five. He says, if I was stuck in the house with a woman and her boyfriend, I'd leave the tub dirty every night and walk around with clam hammer poking out of my boxer shorts. Okay. Shout out to Willie Cameron. JC's JC's super chats are off the rails. Let's get into drama mama. Do me a favor. Hit the like button in the building. We're going to get drama mama and then Jada Pinkett Smith drama mama here, right here. First drama mama up. We have three videos. This is going to be Antonio Brown's drama mama all right antonio brown's ex claims he owes thirty thousand dollars in child support quote i want him arrested and feel like he he feels like he's untouchable okay so let's talk about this i think she has some clips that i guess we want to hear and this is former football player antonio brown here we go does he owe Right now, as of today's date, as of now, he owes $30,940.41. All right, uh, 30000 Okay, she had it down to the money, down to the cent. And I want you guys to know, child support is a broke bitch hustle. Just letting you know, there's no, and, and if you're a normie, I don't want to hear shit about ninjas need to take care of their business. When you know, like, this is the only contract they will ever honor when a ninja owed them child support, they know the number down to the, now how much is your electric bill behind? How much is your, how much is your student loans behind? I bet you she ain't opened the envelope in 18 months. What is the down? How much do you owe before your car about to be repossessed? I bet you, you don't know that amount, but when it comes to you owe me, them bitches already know. I know down, down to the cent. <laughs> this is drag behavior at best. And here's the thing, guys, I know I'm going to tell you this right here. I want you to tell you, I want to tell you this. Any woman that talks like this should be treated as a, as a damn criminal at this point, because everybody knows what she's trying to do. She's trying to hustle Antonio Brown and she bitter. And I want you to notice this. I put this tweet up attention children of divorce and uh, baby mamas. It says right here, don't let your bitter mother talk you out of your inheritance or any other benefits that you'd receive from your father. While you're maybe while you may be young to, too young to realize it, mamas get nothing after you turn 18 and she has nothing to give you. You better start talking to your pops. OK, you better start talking to your damn fathers out here because a lot of your baby mothers are trying to talk you out of something that she ain't going to get from you anymore. Right. She ain't getting no damn money from the husband anymore or the ex-husband or the baby daddy. She ain't getting no inheritance. She ain't getting no property. She ain't getting nothing passed down from this man. So she's trying to collect everything she can by the time before you turn 18. And she's talking you into doing the same thing. She's talking. She's turning you against your father, trying to paint you out in the court of public opinion as a deadbeat and standing between the kids and him. Because this bitch know good and damn well, she got no benefits coming from that man there after the age of 18. And she trying to talk you out of doing the same goddamn thing. Mm. 50 cent son. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, she's not related to that man anymore. Once the kid turns 18, she got nothing coming. But what you kids will do is you'll follow the baby mama. And that bitch ain't going to give you nothing after that. She ain't giving you damn near nothing. All that child support going to her pocket. She's going to sock it to her pocket. And that it ain't going to be handed down to you. You ain't getting nothing. She ain't going to make that much more money. But you, on the other hand, 
you about to make a whole bunch of money after you stop paying child support because you're going to sock into all that money to your pocket. And after about 10, 15, 20, 30 years, maybe 40 years later, when you turn 30 or 40 or 50, when your daddy dies, you're going to realize your baby mama talked you out of your own damn inheritance. Don't let them do it. Y'all did just better wake up. And a lot of young people ain't going to figure it out till it's too damn late until that daddy is on his deathbed dying. And then they say, daddy left me a dollar. How dare him? Daddy left my ass a dollar. How dare you? Yep, 50 Cent son got talked out of millions to try to side with his broke, bitter baby mama. Same with Lamar Odom. Same with 50 Cent. Same with, how many, how many other men? These are just the men in public that we know. Uh, Lil Boosie, Boosie badass, same, hit her daughter, his daughter. Talked him right out of the inheritance. Mm. And I know a bitch going to say, my baby daddy ain't got nothing. You don't know what he going to have in 30 years. You don't know what he going to have in 30 years, especially after you get out of his pockets. When that kid turned 18, he able to do something with that money. You don't know who that man going to be in 30, 40 years. You have no idea. Okay. Once you stop taking that money out of his pockets, he can actually do something with that money. But you, on the other hand, miss $30,000 and 42 cents. You ain't going to have shit. So watch out, guys, when it comes to this. Watch out, guys, when it comes to this. Kids, watch out for this. Your bitter baby mamas know full damn well that she ain't getting nothing from that man anymore. So she's going to talk you into not getting stuff. And you're going to fall for it like a big old goofy ass. Uh, you're going to fall for it. And here's another bitter baby mama. Let's listen to this woman. Now he called himself what a rapper now. So he goes to different cities, you know, make appearances and everything. Also down here in Miami, he make appearances to clubs and make money and everything. He just got him a vert. He, he basically just doing what he, he want to do with his money. At the end of the day, it is his money, but I mean, I still have your kid. Ah, see, look at that right here. Let you get it through your thick skull that I'm broke. <laughs> Dead, flat, stony broke. <laughs> I've got $3.85 in so my again, purse. So again, she got enough idea of what he's doing. She, oh, he a rapper. Oh, he bought a vert. Oh, he bought this. And he doing that with his money. Yeah, that's his money that you're trying to steal. And the only way you're going to steal it is keeping that kid away from the father. And talking that kid out of their inheritance. Because I believe the kid is an adolescent. We're not talking about a young child. We're talking about an adolescent because she says something here. But of course you pocket watching. And you watching them live his life. And bitch you in a two bedroom apartment. With uh, asbestos and popcorn ceilings. Okay so that's where you're going to be. And that's, where you, that's as far as you're going to go. Even if you got the 30 grand. You already broke. All right, That 30 grand is going to back debt. I'm broke, dead, flat, stony, broke. I've got three dollars and eighty-five cents in my purse. Yep. And uh, what happens when that kid goes to college and they don't get a scholarship? Are you gonna pay for college? No. You gonna go for his pockets? Even then, uh, but you ain't gonna go pay for your kids? No. Hell no. You turn a kid against the father, that kid going out there struggle until that kid comes around. Let's continue. So you know, I just don't get it. And she's not an in-house child that he sees every day or deal with. Tony goes months without dealing with my daughter. Most of the time it's because of your behavior. It's your behavior. Because every time he shows up, you, he got to hear your goddamn mouth. That's why. You're a single mother, not because of a deadbeat father. It's because of your behavior. And he tired of hearing your mouth. But that's neither here nor there. And that's when I have to get in and, you know, force him to deal with her. Yeah, like, right. This is your only daughter. Like. Yeah, that's what he got to hear. Who wants to hear that shit? Shut, shut up. Shut up. You bitch. You bitch. Every time he come over, he got to hear your mouth. I, I don't know. Because I was a daddy's girl. My relationship with my daddy was never like this. So I'm just, you know, trying to be strong for my daughter. And yeah, I'm trying to be strong for my daughter. It's like I know it's affecting her and bothering her. Yeah. But, you know. I, so how? Yeah, much her daughter. Her daughter. I thought, I, I thought it was his daughter. He paying the child support. But these are the classic devouring mothers. I got to protect my daughter and be strong for her. No, you don't. You, you're trying to trauma bond with your daughter. All right, this is called trauma bonding. So you think your daughter's being victimized by the dad. You're just a bitter baby mama, so y'all trauma bonding. But again, in the long run, that's going to hurt your child. 
in the long run, that's going to hurt your child. And you'll have in the short term, it's going to hurt them. But because you can't get over the fact that you lost the go, you lost the golden goose that laid the golden egg. and You ain't got no benefits coming, but 30,000. But this ninja making millions. The only thing uh, control you can exert over the ninja is that $30,000 bill. And let me tell you, he could pay it right now. But what he's doing is he's penalizing you and God bless him. He's making you fiend for that 30K. He's making it so when he give you that 30K, bitch, it's going to be gone. It's going to burn a hole through your pocket. Strong for my kid. My daughter, she's she's very quiet. She keeps a lot of stuff in, like kept to herself, but I know when my daughter is being bothered and everything, and it's like it affected her a lot. I, and it's like my kid, we keep going to court every six months. And Why are you going to court every six months? Why are you going to court every six months? Wouldn't it be better if the father, if the, if the kid lived with the father? You're saying the daughter's going to court every six months. I don't think so. You're going to court every six months. Why? Because you try to check his pockets. And it's a repeatedly, like for years, like this not just happening this year. It's ongoing. It doesn't stop with Antonio. And she bring a lot to my attention, like even when he do stuff with his other kids. And uh, she's not involved. Yeah, okay, okay. Look, wait, whose problem? <laughs> mm. See, look, whose problem is that? Guys, look, again, as we tell you, your power is to walk away. Make another one just like the other one. This sounds like 50 Cent's mom. So now it's bothering her, her, your daughter, because you see him taking care of his other kids and they go into Disneyland. Well, that could be easily dealt with. Get out of the fucking way. Why don't you get out of the way? And let the father, not even let, because I even don't want to get her that control. Why don't you get out of the way and do what's right and have the daughter deal with the father directly? But because you keep taking them back to court, he's like, I can't deal with her. Because the loyalties are divided with the child. And then if the child signs with the mother, the father's going to not talk to the child. So you keep taking them back to court every six months. And then you wonder why he doesn't include the child. These people are absolutely disgraceful. This is bitter baby mama 101. But a lot of normies are going to side with her. He need to pay. No, he needs to see his child and have access without this woman standing between them. Let's continue. You know, it's bothering her. So she like, wow, when I'm over there, we don't do this stuff. Because you're counting his pockets. It's pretty simple. The minute he starts giving the daughter stuff, the mother's going to sabotage it. Oh, you gave her this? Well, that means you got money. That's my money. Wow. And she wants to be so, a student athlete, right? She wants to go to a university. How, how old is she? I'm sorry. My daughter's 15, and as of right 15. now, 89 colleges done reached out to my daughter. Okay, so the daughter's a natural athlete. That probably came from the father. And, uh, yeah, now she's in there trying to, uh, because this woman's life is done after this. Oh, that's impressive. So it's like University of Miami, LSU, it like Oregon. And it's like, by him having a daughter like an athlete like her, you would think he'll be in her corner to support her. Twenty, He don't. I have to be strong for my kids. He don't. I And I just try to get down to the root of it. Like it, You're the problem. Mm. And none of these therapists, judges, child support officers, none of these people are going to tell her. Why? Because there's money in her actions. Nobody's going to tell her. You're the problem. Why don't you just get out of the way and, and, and choke your ego? But you got to take them to court every six months. You're the problem. Nobody wants to tell her this. You're the problem. You're in the way. Get out of the way and just let dad and the child be. But no, you're trauma bonded. You're hurt. You're bitter. So now you got to interfere. It's pretty obvious. Are you jealous of her? Like, what's the problem? And she's your only daughter. Right. And it's, I just, I don't know. It's just a lot dealing with him. No, 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 no. It's a lot that you're broke, right? It's a lot that you're broke. Let you get it through your thick skull that I'm broke. You're broke. Dead, flat, stuff. That's what the broke. problem is. I got $3.85. The problem is, is you can't meet your obligations and you're using Antonio Brown to meet them. And you got to keep the kid. You got to poison the kid to get these obligations met. It's pretty simple. <laughs> what is your message to Antonio Brown? My um, 
I do want him arrested because I why I just feel like as of now he's making a mockery out of the judge. No, because you're broke. Like a mockery out of everything because he feels like he's untouchable. <laughs> well, he is technically financially he is. He has the money. He doesn't have the money like you can get to it. I don't care what order they put on him. He can afford to even go to jail and get bailed out. He's got the money, but he but you tried to use let, let me tell you what happened. See, you tried to use the system against him and you realized that he's got slightly above the system. Meaning that you tried to do what? Get his checks extorted from him. You tried to turn him over and make him turn over his paperwork, but his money don't come in like that. His money don't come in through your little bank and so that they can snatch it from the bank. It don't come in through uh, how normal people get their checks. They don't get to garnish his wages. He'll get arrested. He'll be in and out. He'll have, he'll, um, he was arrested an hour ago. I don't even know. He'll, he'll get arrested. He'll pay the tab. He'll bail out. But by then, you'll be a year broke. You'll be a year broke and he'll walk on. And then by that time, when you get that 30,000 check, it's gone. As soon as you put it in the bank, poof. <laughs> and he knows it. But that problem is you didn't try to negotiate with him. The problem is you tried to use the system. You don't get a damn. He don't. I And I just try to get down to the root of it. Like, are you jealous of her? Like, what's the problem? And she's your only daughter. Right. And it's, I just, I don't know. It's just a lot dealing with him. <laughs> what is your I, message to Antonio Brown? My, um, I do want him arrested because I just feel like as yeah. of now, he's making a mockery out of me. And, and so, yeah, so he, yeah, he'll be out by the end of the day. And so there it is right there. And this is probably the third time that um he'll probably be arrested for this one. Let me see if I can pull it up real time. Let me see if I can pull it up real time. See if he's arrested. I um I don't see it. I see uh something here: criminal charges, alleged, alleged um allegating. Wait, sorry, alleging to battery. I don't see any news of him being arrested. Let me see here. Nope, I don't see any rules right here. Nope, that's another one. I don't have any news of him. I don't see any news of him arrested. So. You guys are saying that, but I'm pretty sure you might be trolling. But anyway, let's go to the next bitter baby mama. And it's going to be this one right here. It's going to be this one. And by the way, here's my thing. Guys, pay your child support. Pay your child support and also take care of your kids. Other than that, other than that, it don't matter. All right, it don't matter. Here's another bitter baby mama. Lady is going viral on social media for calling her son her husband, okay? So here we go with more son husbandry. And so here we go right here. I don't know what she's holding back there, but it says the rise of the single mom and son husband. I told you. I told you guys. And look at this poor guy. <laughs> this emotional incest. She even calls it son husband, which is uh, something that I did not create, but I brought to this area of the manosphere or the this area segment in 2018 or 2019. I start calling it son husband. The rise in the, uh, the rise of the single mom and son husband. That, I mean, this is where it's going. This poor young man don't have a chance in hell. Look at him. He's probably about 13 or 14. It's gone. It's gone. And so she's emotionally incestuously having a relationship with him. And he's providing all the things that she cannot submit to a man to provide. So she has to have, has, has to, actually has to have authority over him, uh, which is her parental authority. And she also has physical size. She also has the ability that he cannot walk away which is some sort of terrorism, emotional. She's also emotionally terrorizing him. And why is she calling this man, little man, man, the, the king of the house, the man of the house? This is why young black men are in the position that they're in. This is sad. It's savagery, 
savagery. And it, it, it reeks of some sort of, it's even probably worse than this in the house than we actually would know. A husband is not a person. A, a husband is a person that has, probably should have some sexual access to you. This is sad things to see, man. But this is more of the baby mama drama and the son husbandry that we're seeing out here. The young boy is going to have to have somebody rescue him from her. One thing that I've been saying is that many times these women will, these mothers will say, hey, I'm here to protect my son. I'm here to do this. I'm here to protect my daughter. And then oftentimes they're protecting the daughter through the, from the system or maybe the father. My question is, who protects the child against the mother? In this situation, this is the question I have. Who's able to protect this child against the mother? Who's able to say, hey, son, you know, you're being isolated. You're being abused. You're having, you're having responsibilities put on you that should not be. There's emotional incest. There's emotional terrorism. There's gaslighting. There's manipulation. Who can come in between this person and the child? Nobody. And this is why women devour can isolate their child from the father. No one can mess this up. No one can protect this child. Nobody. The teachers won't. The pastors won't. Okay, son, it's now time, 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 time to be the man of the house. That's what they're going to tell him. You know, look out for your mama and always watch and oversee her and protect her. No, that's what a husband does. The father can't protect. The father's gone. The father left. So this is what I'm talking about, man. This is the stuff that we're now watching our son because nobody would go in here. I think she went viral and people called her out. Even when they called her out, people would defend it. Well, the dad left or whatever they were going to say. But who protects this child from the mother? Nobody can. And then they go deal with this type of abuse for this boy's going to deal with this for the next five, probably five to ten years and uh, have no one to call on, nowhere to go to, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Next one here is going to be this woman right here. And uh, it says right here, this took a turn for the worse. Let's listen to this video. Strongest one in this house. No, I'm definitely stronger than you are. No, not. Yeah, I am. Not than my dad. Probably not stronger than your dad, no. My dad's... I've never seen my dad. I don't know why we, why do we let these things go on? Nobody, people really refuse to call women out on this stuff. I mean, just the entire thing, right? If you didn't hear it, the mother's going back and forth with her young boy. The boy says, you ain't stronger than my daddy. She's like, I'm, I'm probably, I'm stronger than you. Again, two children bantering with each other. Of course, this is, uh, you know, if I told my kid came in, oh, I got more muscles than you, listen. Then the child realizes, I ain't got no daddy. But people let this shit go on. Nobody calls them out. This is crazy. And then when the dad, when the kid calls her out, she got to look stupid. No, I'm definitely stronger than you are. No, we're not. Yeah, I am. Not than my dad. Probably not stronger than your dad, no. My dad's... I've never seen my dad. Oh, man. <laughs> Goodness. Let me pull up... Uh... Yeah, man. This is what we're doing today. I do have uh, Antonio Brown is arrested. So uh, the the going to the court of public opinion certainly did help in the matter. And uh, she went to the court of public opinion and said, I wanted that man arrested. And so here it is right here. Antonio Brown arrested in Broward County for allegedly failing to pay child support. There's this mugshot. And uh, we got. This is right here to see if this the same baby mother jail records from Broward County office shows that the 35 year old was booked in the jail around midnight on Sunday on an out of county warrant. He has since been released. All right. So he's already out. 
He's already out. He has since been released. In and out. <laughs> In and out. And uh, the mother got the check. He got $15,000 bond. And it says right here, Will Treese Jackson, Will Treese Jackson, who is the mother of Brown's daughter, Antonia, was born in tw- who was born in 2008, spoke with TMZ and said her ex owed her nearly $31,000 of unpaid child support. Quote, I do want him arrested because right now he's making a mockery out of the judge, out of the entire thing, out of everything because he's like, and feels like he's untouchable. According to TMZ, a judge ruled in August that Brown had missed child support payments. Yes, I remember that. And was ordered that he be arrested. It says Local 10 News obtained a court copy of the arrest report on Monday, which states that Brown was taken into custody outside of his home in Dania Beach after he entered a taxi. The report states that the warrant was filed by the Miami-Dade Police Department. All right, and so what presumably would happen is that he, out of uh, out of uh, for an agreement for him to be released, he has to pay the child support, whatever he's back. So he has to pay that, and he probably paid it. And if he didn't pay it, he wouldn't have got released. So he got the bond out. I don't know how it works in Florida. That's how it probably would work in many states. And when they arrest you, you have to pay a certain sum, whatever your arrearages are. You pay your arrearages, you bond out and get out. But there it is right there. There it is right there. So the bitter baby mama, she thinks she's going to win. The problem is she's going to be in a bind in another year or two. The child is 15. She'll probably take them back to court in the next six months. So, and the relationship between the daughter and the father will be worse. Because she's trying to exert control. The only thing she can control right now is this. So she's trying to exert her control. Then she gets her money. Then after three or four years, that'll be it. And he's washed his hands of that child. I'm just letting you know. He'll wash his hands. And she got her money. So there you go right there. Let me check Super Chats and we'll get on to uh, Jada Pinkett. Actually, uh, let's see here. Let me jump into Jada Pinkett real quick. Pause. Yep, Uh, J.D. Pinkett-Smith surviving Jada Pinkett. Let's give you a video here. Remember, there was a video of her. Let me see here. Or there was a video of her recently as she's promoting her book. It says right here, Tupac proposed to Jada Pinkett while he was locked up. And people have done their research on this and said she potentially might be lying. We played the clip. But here's an interesting clip that I found in relation to this. And this is from a relative of Tupac. And the reason why we are doing this, because we want to know what Jada Pinkett, what time she's on. I don't consider her to be a liar. I do consider her to actually have evil, um, evil uh, manipulation uh, purposes. I don't consider her to be too much of a liar, though, because I think the actual liar in the relationship is more likely to be Will Smith. I think he's more the liar than Jada. But... This is a clip from the channel, The Art of Dialogue. This is Tupac Shakur's cousin, who they validated have had a very close relationship with Tupac. Meaning that he was in and out of prison, but throughout those years, he actually knows family history that nobody knows. And he was revealing it in this interview. Now, this interview popped up as a suggestion to me. And I'll listen to it in in its entirety. And in the video, he makes this claim. Now, this video was out way before Jada Pinkett released this particular claim against uh, 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 Tupac. So I just want to tell you, this is a video that precedes the claim that Jada made by at least a few months. So this claim didn't come out. He did not respond to this claim. This claim came out before we even knew that this was a possibility. Now, other people are going to say that he was already married while he was in there, but he was, but he actually was deserved divorce papers by that woman while he was locked up. And then when he got out, he got the marriage annulled. So when he got locked up, he was married. Nobody knew about it, but the woman served him divorce papers while he was locked up. So the marriage was over and he got the marriage annulled afterwards. So people were using that as a defense. Hey, he was married. And people are using other things. But listen to this video, and you make the call. You make the call. This is allegedly, 
well, this is a confirmed to be Tupac's cousin, and he hung he was around him the entire rise of his career. So let's play the video. And he says that Tupac was trying to arrange to marry Jada. The video came out two months ago. You you make the call. Uh fair use. That's interesting. I I find that interesting. So um do you know Jada Pinkett person? No. You never met her? Mm-hmm. Okay. Tupac ever speak to you about yeah. her? Yeah. And and I don't want to ask this quick. Mm-hmm. It's been a lot of rumors, mm-hmm. uh, Bill, you, you, as you well know. Um, from your knowledge, from your cousin, conversating with him, um, did Tupac ever express to you that him and Jada was intimately involved? No. Okay. Okay. But he loved her. I know that. <clears throat> He never said they had sex, but he never said they didn't have sex. Okay. So they were intimate. He never said they were or weren't. weren't. I didn't know whether they were or weren't, weren't. That wasn't part of the conversation. The part of the conversation with Tupac and I was about him wanting to marry Jada while he was in prison. So Tupac told you that he wanted to marry Jada Pinkett while he was in prison. Yeah, very clearly. He was clear about that. Now, there you go. Right Now, listen, there's a, there's a longer interview on this one. But I find it to be curious. A lot of people didn't find this interview. Some people didn't do their... This is a guy that says, I have intimate knowledge of this man. Intimate knowledge of this woman. Well, he doesn't know her. But he said he was very clear. Now, again, I've actually said, when ninjas is in prison, they'll do anything. And remember, he was trying to get out on cash bail. So a ninja will do anything. They'll tell... They'll, they'll, they'll change gods in prison. They'll change gods in prison. So here's the thing about it. When we look at this situation with Jada, yeah, she deserves a lot of the, the, the bite back that she's getting. But the funny thing I see here is that men are not acknowledging the mistakes that, um, that men are making. And Will Smith made a bunch of mistakes with this one. And to not look at Will as the problem here. Will is the problem. In that he's allowing Jada to get what he's uh, to get what she's getting out here, without him coming to a conclusion to leave that woman. Go back to the video that I put out. Will is keeping Jada hostage. A lot of you guys are keeping your girl hostage. Your girl wants to break up with you right now, and I've been teaching this. She'll hand you the scissors to break up so that she can be the victim on the way out. Then you'll do the cutting because you'll finally get fed up, but you'll put up with so much shit from these women and your wives and your girlfriends, you will not walk away to protect your own self. Then you will blame the woman on the whole way. And she did this coach and she did this and she did this. Guys, it shouldn't take that many times. I've been there. It's hard to walk away. It's hard to walk away from a marriage. It's hard to walk away knowing you're going to lose. But what you guys got to understand is that Will is the problem here. Clearly, he refuses to let this woman go. Let this bitch go. Now, he it could be for a variety of reasons I've already discussed. But now he's being embarrassed to where he'll never recover, which he should have let her ass go long time ago. I don't know the reasons why he can't let her go. Oh, we got married in a blood ceremony where we won't leave. We, we said there'll be no divorce. I don't know. I, listen, a lot of people say there'll be no divorce and they leave. Maybe she knows something that he doesn't know. But a lot of people are trying to frame Jada as the liar. And I'm saying you guys got it all wrong. She might be that. I think she's more witch than liar. She's more witch than liar. I think she's not really saying what she wants to say. Because I think there's some truths that she has that she would love to put out, and she ain't put it out yet. You talk about a ride or die, bitch. She might be it, because there's some shit that she could say either against Will or against the both of them. Maybe she's not saying it because she's probably going to be part of the part and partial of the problem. But I find that Will is the problem. Will is highly the problem in this one. And there's only so much you can blame on a woman. (laughs) There's only so much. 
after you get to one, two, and three times a woman does you dirty, if you stick around, it's your fault. Okay, we always have these conversations. There's only so many times you can blame the woman on this one. It's his monkey ass at this point. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let me get, we're about to get to the main event. I know you guys are curious. That's the one thing that women hate. We're going to talk about that. And they hate that you have it, but actually they love that you do have it initially. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He said, Will has no game. Did you think he ever did? Did you think he ever had game? He was a guy that clearly never had game, if you will. Shout out to Dennis says, my bad. It was the 60s anti-manifesto. And Mr. Apple says, a lot of young black men in the 80s or 90s joined the military because they wanted to get away from their single mothers, man. Shout out to you. Yep, shout out to you. And shout out to the weak men out here. Ninjas think everything is simping. Ninja, at some point, you goofy ass men that keep out coming out here losing against women, you ninjas better own up. It's your goofy ass fault. Yes. Ninjas think everything is simping and you think the woman's always the problem. It's false. And y'all gonna realize it at some point. Y'all gonna realize it. Most of the mistakes that you've made with women that you allowed to happen was your goddamn fault after a while. Because you let her get away with it. You let her get away with it. You could keep letting them get away with it and then come out and blame them, but ninja, nobody gives a shit about your problems out here. Have you not noticed? I'm one of the only person that cares. You turn on me, I'll turn on you real quick. I'll let you ninjas know right now that y'all some punk-ass mitches out here. Y'all some punk ass Mitches and let the Mitches keep calling my name out in this chat. Most of y'all punk Mitches won't own up that you a punk ass Mitch. So take that for what it's worth. We got more Mitches than bitches out here and uh, several of them are in my chat right now. We got more Mitches than bitches in this world and that's the problem. Mm. But keep your punk Mitch ass here. And I'll let you know who you are. (laughs) Y'all want to blame women for all your problems in your life. And it was your fault the entire time. You let her get away with 50, 11 things. But it is what it is. You do what you got to do out here. But I can't do it for you. I can't do it for you. You got to do what you got to (laughs) do. But yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fake ass Mitches out here. But uh, anyway, and I've been here for five years. I ain't going to feel sorry for you, your Mitch asses. All right? I ain't going to feel sorry for you. You get what you get because, look, all the information is out here. But your Mitch ass, your Mitch ass is still falling for the bullshit. <laughs> all right? Anyway, shout out for these punk Mitches out here. Yep. A lot of Mitch energy out here. And then you out here mad that these women getting over you, despite the fact that I didn't gave you two, three books and you still out here getting your Mitch ass in trouble. All right, but it is what it is. I can't help you. (laughs) All right. Anyway, they scared, they scared, they scared to put, they they scared to put their foot down on a woman. These women are harmless unless you put them in position to harm you. Anyway, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Where we at? We got super chat. Shout out to DMW Antonio Brown arrested today per station. WPLG 10 in Miami. Shout out to y'all. Joshua Moon says, I never seen my dad. That hurts, coach. Free agent lifestyle for life. And MC Hamster says, it's always Jermaine's fault. Jermaine, let her in. You letting her in. Yep. And it's all Jermaine's fault. It's always Jermaine's fault. Indeed, shout out to you. Uh, we got cash apps over here. Y'all letting them come in. Yo, it's weird. Y'all some weirdos out here. Shout out to Rod. He says, I'm supporting because you are telling my story. Shout out to you and thank you. That's a sponsorship. I'm rich, shout out to you, man. Telling your story. Do we all deal with these stories, man? But at some particular point, it is what it is. 
All right. Uh, shout out to uh, Big Buck. He says Adam was cursed for listening to the women. Indeed, there's barbecue out here. It's barbecue in there. I'm giving y'all the prescription. Don't listen to women. Don't follow them. Don't put your life into their hands. They always follow you. It's pretty simple. <laughs> it's pretty simple. But y'all want to prove me wrong, and then your Mitch ass come in here hurt on Monday. Want to be mad at me. I'm telling you, you biting the hand that's feeding you. And there's not too many men that can give you this particular amount of information. But, of course, you know, Mitch is going to Mitch. Mitch is going to Mitch. <laughs> All right, let these Mitches Mitch. Uh, shout out to, let's see here. Oh, we got um, Kevin Sullivan, coach speaking real. Broke, bitch, better pick a struggle, the money or the father. You can't have both. Definitely can't get both. Definitely can't get both. But that, what this woman wants is the money. Money over the father. All right, shout out to no government name SD. Wow, great point about kids letting their mothers talk them out of their inheritance. Rich people call 50 Cent a business genius. That baby mama wasn't smart enough to let her son have unlimited access to a business mogul. It's absolutely crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Like you guys will, I, I, I mean, how do you, how do you as 50 cents mom hold the child against that father? I, I don't understand it. How do you not say, let this, let my son soak up the game. And that's bitter baby mama ism. That's bitter baby mama ism. You're seeing 50 cent rise and you don't say, Hey son, let me, let me put you around that. No. And one thing I'm going to tell you about children and, um, children and uh, parents is that you know the father's role is highly I guess I would say what, what we do to fathers is we really don't appreciate a lot of the sacrifice blood sweat and tears a father makes I've seen fathers make exceptional exceptionally great efforts for their family and people just say ah and then when the father does very much nothing they'll just say ah like there's no difference between the men that are actually doing things well for their family and not. I want you to think about this. Is there a difference between how men are treated by doing well for their family and doing nothing? Every, every father still feels underappreciated. Every one of them. And he'll still try to make the mother feel appreciated. So there's no difference between. Now, if a stepdad comes in and treats a kid better than what they perceive the father, he'll get all kind of credit. The stepdad gets all the credit. Oh, look at what he's doing, not even for his own seed. So then the stepdad's effort, which is minimal, he doesn't have to do it. He'll get a lot of credit. But the actual dad, it doesn't matter what he's done. I've seen a guy build a house with his own hands and get disrespected in his house. Disrespected. They was trying to, she was trying to wait for that ninja to die. She was talking shit on that ninja for until he died. And I was like, this ninja built this entire mansion with his own hands, his own crew. And she still was dissing him. I was like, God damn, this is, this is a wild world. But one thing I know is that a, a, a kid, especially a son, should always see his father winning. Now, is that the expense of seeing the mother lose? Well, the mother makes a decision to lose. Remember, single motherism is a choice. The struggle didn't choose you. You chose the struggle. So if, in fact, a father is winning and the mother chooses to not win, that's a decision that she made. But the father inevitably will win, and the mother knows this. So the only thing she can do is while she's losing is to force the child to not watch the father win. Every kid can win in life as long as they see their dad winning. Yeah. That could change a kid's life, watching their dad come out here and build shit with their hands and make nothing, something out of nothing, which they'll never see their mother do. She can't even make hamburger helper half the time. But it does happen. So what people are concerned is they don't want to see the mother lose. So if they can take from the father and get him to lose and get her to somewhat believe she's winning, 
by collecting a child support check, throwing the dad in jail. The effects over their life, you'll see that kids will not see themselves. They will not achieve much from that scenario. They'll never achieve that much. Watching the father get thrown in jail. Imagine a 15-year-old daughter watching her father getting thrown in jail so the mother can get a child support check that that kid won't even see half of that money. The kid won't see half of that money. We're talking about Antonio Brown's daughter. The kid might not even see 70% of that money. If we're lucky, and by the time that check comes and the kids start saying, I need some new cleats for my track, I need this, the mother's going to be like, well, baby, I need to pay my back rent. I need to pay. And that kid ain't going to touch shit on that check. But her daddy went to jail. You know what I mean? Like, this is what, we're, this is what we constitute as winning and support. But guys, my thing is this. Do we know the game? You got to know how to play it. You got to know how to play it. Yeah, she ain't going to see very much of that money. Like, that mother is not going to deposit that check into their daughter's account. We already know this. And it's the child's money. That's basically what they're collecting, the child's money. Is that mom going to take that money and put it into their daughter's account or put it into a trust fund, put it into a college savings account? Nope. Sad. Shout out to no government name says I'm confused. Why would a B just pay? Why wouldn't he pay the 30 K? Why go through getting locked up? Well, that's the problem that we're having here. Listen, if somebody extorted you, would you be willing to pay it? <laughs> like this is the problem here. This is the problem here. I know a lot of people don't understand, but when you've been victimized and you had your child used against you, victimized, you had the courts, the Tory soldiers, you're being extorted. You're being treated unfairly. Do you gladly hand over money? Do you gladly do it and walk away? Or do you feel a certain way? Now, he could do it, but I'm pretty sure he's pissed about it. I'm pretty sure he feels like he's being treated unfairly. I'm pretty sure he doesn't like the fact that his daughter's being used against him. I'm pretty sure he doesn't just want to cut the check. Right. Are, do you feel glad when people extort you? You see what I mean? So he's like, okay, you'll extort me. I'll treat you. I'll, I'll make you work for it. And my opinion is you're going to work for every dime you get. I'm not just going to hand over money because somebody says so. Oh, you owe me. Who says the system? Okay. All right. Get it from me. Then I'm going to make you work every hour. By the time you collect this money, you will have re- used resources to get this money. But what y'all ninjas do is you feed the beast and then they feel emboldened to steal for more men. You know what I mean? Like, guys, think about this shit. <laughs> think about it. it it's, it's one of these things. It's like, guys, I mean, I get it. But you guys just ha- handing over money and not making them work for it is actually jackassery for me. And if there could be a chance that you could play this game, I would play it. It ain't hurting him. The ninja been to jail 15 times. He got lawyers. He don't give a shit, but he going to make sure that he going to make sure that they work for it. He says you hand over 10K. They want 11K. Oh, by the way, paying the paying the payment demonstrates that you have the ability to pay it. I'm going to say this one more time. Paying the payment demonstrates that you have the ability to pay it. The system works that way. You hand over a check. They say you can volunteer. You volunteered that payment. Is that true? No, you just ordered it. So really the payment was under duress. The payment was under duress. That's why I don't never pay the full amount. All right. I always pay below full amount just so I can say I, I tried my best to scrape up as much money as I could. But demonstrating that you can pay it just makes them believe that you have more ability to pay more, okay? Mm. Please understand that. And they'll say that. They'll give you a temporary order. And if you pay the temporary order amount, they'll say, well, at least you paid that much. We know you can pay that. 
That's a demonstration of payment. Anyway, guys don't realize that. Always say that. I'll always say that whatever payment you're paying is under duress. It is not voluntary. It is based on the court order through extortion, threat, threat of imprisonment. Write that shit on the envelope. <laughs> write it on the envelope. Write it on the check and never pay them nothing but money orders. Ninja never be, I'm just telling you, man. And I always pay some odd ass amount. If the if the payment was $800, I'm going to pay $657.38. <laughs> Why you pay that much? Because that's all I can scrape together. The hell. And don't think that just because you paying it doesn't mean they not going to come back and ask you for more. This is called extortion. Somebody kidnaps your kid and they say, hey, I need a million dollars. If you pay it, they coming back for more. Ninja. <laughs> if you just say, oh, hold on for a second. I got a million right here. Hold on for a second. Give me 15 minutes. And then you scrape up a million dollars and you hand it over in 15 minutes. What are they going to think? I could have got more. Man, guys don't be thinking, man. Oh, you got, oh shit. You came up with a million. Okay. I need 2 million. Fuck. I guess I, I guess I shortchanged myself. All right. Anyway, it's crazy out here. Why wouldn't he just pay it? I'm just letting you know, this is why you just don't pay it. (laughs) Where are we at right here? Uh, here we go. Uh, no government name says witchcraft is real. He says my daughter was humbled or sorry. My daughter was mumbling some BS on the way home. As we passed her friend's house, I asked her where she learned it. She said she learned it over there, man. God dang the witchcraft. Mm. Witchcraft is real. Hey man, your baby mother. Is going to watch you make payments. And Ninja, if you make them payments free and clear and you tell her, I'll wipe my ass with this child support. Ninja, you just made her take your ass back to court. <laughs> She'll be like, oh, really? Oh, that little child support don't help? Okay, that don't hurt you? Okay, cool. I'm going to take your ass back in for the rest of whatever you ass your ass got. But why don't you just pay it? You know what I mean? Like, come on, guys. Y'all got to think third dimensionally out here. Think third dimensionally out here. Play the game. Shout out to MC Hamster says it's always Jermaine's fault. And he says, peace, coach. Society has lots to say about father's obligation, but never about his capabilities. Keep pounding the message. Pause. Yeah, they want, they want child support. They don't want child support. As somebody said brilliantly in a video, they want child support. They don't want child support. They don't want you to support the child. They'll take, they'll take less supporting of the child and more child support. This is not a game to play with out here. These people are in, uh, this is a system that is actually, this, this is the reform that we need because these women are using the system actually not how it was intended meaning that it was intended for deadbeat dads. I don't think it was intended for husbands and men that broke up with women. But that's how they use it. Oh, you broke up with me, I'm hurt, and I'm going to use and I'm going to trauma bond with my child, debilitate them intentionally to get more money from the father. That's basically what they're doing. Now, for the fathers that left, the 10% of the fathers that left, or you got fathers out here with multiple baby mothers, those represent a small percentage of men but okay, put them on child support. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not against that. I'm talking about you got a divorce and you put a ninja on child support. What you're doing is incentivizing the woman to be less cooperative as a parent. You're incentivizing her, meaning that she could use it. And because she sees that as an opportunity, all she has to do is become less cooperative as a parent. That's the only thing she has to do. I will not cooperate. And unfortunately, This is what she'll do, and she'll get a benefit from it. She'll get a benefit. If we got rid of that system, we'd actually be able to make parenting better. But if you want guys to just say, okay, I'll pay the child support, and I'll be a father, how? How can he he do that when he has to work extra time to give this woman a check? 
they're using the fact that he's a male in the situation and he's going to have to earn more. And then she works less or she works just as much as she did, but he has less time with the child. Nobody's calling that out. Everybody always just says it's Debbie dad and he needs to support his kids. I don't know why we will not go past that. But of course, I'm dealing with oxygen thieves and normies and knuckle draggers. It's a bad system. It's a bad system. Then you say he then you say he needs to pay and then be a part of the kid's life. Well, if he had custody of the of the child without the mother being present, I'm pretty sure the child would be better off because she even admits that. Oh, he needs to be a part of her life. Okay, cool. Send the kid over there. She'll say no. It's weird. It's double dipping and it's actually putting kids as the pawns. It damages the kid. It damages the kid. How does it how does it damage how does it damage how does damaging one parent not harm the kid? Either way. Anyway. But stop trying to you guys got to be careful who you're impregnating out here. Shout out to uh Kyrie says to the coach keep speaking facts. Shout out to you. Cam is in the building. Appreciate you. Oh, by the way, the system is also beneficiary for these people, judges in the I'm not going to get into it, but the child support system and the judges, they get kickbacks. Not only that, your attorneys get kickbacks. So it's really a very demonic system that is is equivalent to the serpent handing Eve the forbidden fruit. Because the woman is ignorant of this process. She uses it against, you know, bitter baby mamas are a problem. She uses it against the father. And then eventually what will happen is the state benefits, the, the bar association benefits, the judge's retirement coffers get filled up. She's ignorant of this. It's Title 4D. She's completely ignorant, nor does she care because her only interest is making it to the next month. Let you get it through your thick skull that I'm broke. Yeah. Dead, flat, stony, broke. I've got $3.85 in my What purse. I would love to see. I would love to see these mothers say, go to your daddy's house and let me go get a second job. Go to your daddy's house the majority of the time so I can find another man. Because obviously as a single mother, it's hard to date. So you go to your daddy's house. So he's not out here getting puss and uh, buying all this shit up and traveling. Go over there and make his life miserable. Like you're portraying your life is miserable, rainy, raising your own kids. I'm miserable. It's tough. I can't feed my kids. Okay, go make that. Why don't you let him have a miserable life? And you go out there and you run the streets. You go out there and you go get a second job. Why don't you go have the life that he's having out here, but you won't do it. And that's where, that's where the crux of the problem is. Because she's saying she has a miserable life. Well, put that on him. I'm guaranteeing you. I'm guaranteeing you. He's going to do a better job of raising them kids in your absence than you're doing in his absence. And they know it. Because he's going to use that money and actually turn it into a benefit for the kids. She's just going to consume 70% of it. Um, and still won't have the kids do better. But anyway, enough about that. Let's get to Kaylin says, Coach, you've spoken on men being the true romantics and your right to be fair to women aside from trying to seduce us sexually. How can women be romantic towards men? As men, we have to, we have to, I think you meant, there's a word missing. We have to something, everything for ourselves so I can see how it would be harder for them to be romantic to us. Maybe this will solve it. Maybe this next conversation will solve it. What do, what do women hate about men? I would say everything, and I've actually done a stream, is that they don't really like men like that. Obviously, they like what we provide and how we make them feel. But, of course, if they like men, more men would probably have opportunities with them, and they simply will eliminate 90% of men off the rip. They really don't like men. They are looking for what you qualify. What can you do for me? Listen to this woman here. She's going to give it to you. And, of course, I've told you these things. I've educated you about these things. Okay? I've educated you about these things. But I want you to hear from them. I want you to hear from the horse's mouth or the horse's mouth. Men who have options are not patient with women. Uh Uh-oh. 
men who have options are not patient with women. I hate that shit. But of course, they think they qualify for a man with options. And they don't. Nothing humbles a woman faster than finding out they do not qualify for the man that has options. Now, in their bird brain, they think they qualify. I think I can hypergamy my way up to a man that has what I want. The 5% income guy. The 10% income guy. Right? I deserve more. You're going to hear some women acknowledge this. But we called it coochie games, and they ask, what can you play coochie games with a man that has options? No, you cannot. Nothing works against a man that has options. Nothing works against a man that values himself. Nothing works. Like, look at Antonio Brown's situation. He values himself in his pride. This is a pride argument. And he's like, screw you. And nothing worked other than she was able to get the system on him. In her world, she thinks she's getting to him. He bailed right out. So he's got options. She even said he thinks he's above the system. He is. He like, screw the system. They can only do so much. I can afford to bail out. They hate that shit. They thought she thought he was going to be locked up for 30 days. Right back out. When you have the options, when you have the leverage, they can't stand it. Let's let her testify. They hate this. But at the same time, they love it. They want you. But when they know they can't qualify and get you to fold, they hate it. Usually, for the most part, men who have um, a lot of female options, they're not really fond of giving women grace, being patient or um, compromising with said woman or women that they're dealing with. Most of the time, these are younger men, like 20s, 30s, they're still in their prime and following their purpose, right? But what do you really expect? And I'm not giving too much of an excuse, but we're just being realistic here. What do you expect from a man that's attractive on his purpose, like I said, coming across women who really don't challenge him. And when I say challenge, not to be combative in a negative way, but to let you know, like, hey, I get it. You that guy or whatever, but you're going to treat me accordingly like a woman should be treated. But if they're dealing with women who feed into their ego, their toxic ego, oh, you the shit, you this, you're that subconsciously, are they really going to respect women overall? And when they do come across a quote unquote good woman, they'll use all of her um, affection and love that she's pouring into him and then the moment that he's tired okay I'm gonna put on the shelf all right and I'm gonna dust off and bring it back and that's why I respect men like um hype beast Aaron shout out to him and I'm gonna tag his name on TikTok and on my Instagram but he pretty much said like you know if I'm not ready I'm not gonna waste a a good woman's time now I might waste the whole time but a good woman she's hard to come by so why play games with her usually for the most part, men who have um, a lot of female. Op- all right, all right, so we're back at the beginning. <laughs> Hold on for a second. Okay, now the the thing is, she's absolutely right, and that's what I've been trying to tell y'all, bitches. She's right, but a lot of guys right here, you get the one itis. You're trying to impress one woman. You get rid of all your hoes. And then she comes in there and you make it easy for her. Many times you might think she's beautiful, she's pretty, and then you open up the door. You you drop the drawbridge. You open up the VIP, the velvet rope. You let her behind. And she hasn't done much. Me, remember the guys, the black guys on the escalator, right? Oh, you're pretty. You're beautiful. I'll do whatever. You're my man. Here's my handshake. Can I get a hug? So she's realizing that she's trying to trade in the fact that she's not a skeezer. I'm not a hoe. I'm a good woman. I'm a good woman. Then she says, I open up, give me, I love bomb you, which makes it easier for her to love bomb him because he has options financially or with women. She says, I better do something more to get him, which means she has to compete. And many of these good women will compete for just a little bit of time. I will give her that. Some of these good women will compete, but they think competing is giving you uh, some lazy ass head and a couple pieces of peace leave and a couple of eye bats and all of that stuff. She gives you the only thing she has. That's what she says. Then she says they don't exercise patience. 
So you love bombed him. You gave him some lazy ass, lethargic ass head. You were like, I'm going to do something that you think is good. Meanwhile, he has an ugly broad that comes over and cleans his pipes out like clockwork. And she enjoys it. She sits down Indian style in front of it like this. And she goes on for 30 minutes. You drop your neck, maybe gave him five little lazy pieces of head. And now you think you done done something. Well, I'm not that type of girl. I deserve more. I'm not a nasty girl like them. Now, I ain't going to do that nasty stuff like these other ones. Well, hey, the nasty stuff is what I like. But then they get challenged. Then they say, okay, put up or shut up. Okay, you got to compete. And she's saying that they're not giving her the patience. They're not granting her patience to compete and separate themselves from the rest of the pack, the hoes, the 304s, the wild horses, the other good women. Because he has options, she don't like it. Now, here's my question. If she finds a guy like that, because she'll say, I got options too. Women don't, they're not afraid to say that. I got options. I can get any man that I want, but I choose you. And that's you. My question is, how many more of those guys are out there that you're going to get an opportunity to do what? Compete for She's not, let's just, let's just call it what it is. I'm going to describe her. She's average at best. Shout out to Kevin Samuels. This is an average woman. She's telling us she's a good woman. Well, I can't tell. I would have to see it. But even if you're a good woman, there's way more good women than there are men that don't have options. Okay, so there's way more of you. You're in high supply especially the ones who believe they're, that they're good, compared to men who have options. There's not that many mathematically, especially if they qualify, you know, if they have their life together, they have money, they're attractive. Th- these men are in short supply. What's the likelihood that you'll meet another one? Okay. Mm. It's going to be lower. And if you meet him, can you get as far with that other guy as you got to, with the other one? It's going to be difficult because he has options. In my opinion, this is the thing that separates men from the rest of the men. Even the players, the max. One thing that separates the players, the max, and the guys that run game is that they have options. And they're always keeping their options open. They're making it so they have the woman competing. But what they have you guys doing out here when you don't have options, they don't have, they're not competing for you. You're competing for them. You're competing for them. You'll make her the celebrity and you're the fan. You'll tell her there's nobody else I'm talking to. These are all things that are going to get you to fail because then she doesn't have to compete. She'll give you less of a, she'll give you less of an effort and say, Hey, you're lucky to get this effort. You're lucky to get this effort. And um, it will be a lazy, lethargic effort. I believe that women inherently don't want to compete with other women. And I've taught this. I've showed you this. They don't want it. They just want the they just want a higher valued male to have no competition, an open lane to get to him to do bare minimum shit. Mm. Bare minimum. They're giving you the bare minimum anyway. In in regards to what a man can get from a woman, truly, the best benefit that he can give is long term consistency. What she can give you in the first two months doesn't even amount to what she can is capable of giving you long term. A woman's a woman's benefit is long term. Like can she not destroy you in 10 years? Can she not can she mess up raising your kids? It ain't the sex that they can give you in 3 months. They need to be able to give you long term consistency and they don't want to compete with that. They don't want to show that. They don't want to stick around long enough. They don't want be want to be the sole survival. Sole survivor. In my world This is how it works, and I don't know ladies are going to be here. You need to be the sole survivor when you're messing with a guy that have options. Same thing as a Survivor Series and the TV show Survivor. If you want to compete for a higher value guy, you got to be the sole survivor. You got to be the last bitch standing. That's how you win. That's how y'all go in. I'm just giving you fatherly advice. Meaning that at the end, 
This ninja finally go, all right, now listen, I know you ain't got no time. Because you waited too long and you focused on your career and you got your little townhouse and all that shit. So I could focus on my career. If you want to win with a guy who has options, you got to be the last one that stuck around. And he look over there and go, it's you. What? But y'all don't want to do it. And I get why you don't want to do it. Because you want to do the bare minimum. Hey, look at me. I'm good. This is kind of what we're doing here. And we got in this way because women have showed us a little bit of good. And we went in both feet deep. And then all of a sudden, the bait and switch. All of a sudden, the bait and switch. So for the women that says, hey, listen, I don't have time for all of that. I'm 32 years old. I got to get these tonsils and these eggs buttered up. I don't have time to do this. Ma'am, you started too late. You started way too late. You fooled yourself into believing you didn't have to start this process at 20. I'm sorry. You were you were given the devil's fruit and you bid it. But now let's take a look at this woman here. And I got another video to play to show. Now take a look at her. She's well past 30. Now she wants to do what? I'm going to show you a little bit here. Back out. I'm going to show you a little bit here. Back out. She don't have time to be the last woman standing. Right? It's her fault. She should have tried this 12 years ago, but she missed the boat. But you know what she didn't miss? I'm sorry, guys. It's what it is, guys. Leveraging options is how you get them. Now, it doesn't mean you're fully safe when you're dealing with le- leveraging options. You can still get put on child support if you're not careful. You can still get false allegations if you're not careful. But what they want to do is speed race their way through men like this is a game speaking of a game the card game dating apps here's another one check this out this woman's been on instagram i think she's been on this channel before take a look at the things that they do to disqualify men this is why they deal with low quality men let's go ahead and listen should be a scientific study about the men on Bumble because I swear I think they are the most incompetent people I have ever encountered. Every Thursday they do like a speed dating thing. You have three minutes to talk to somebody and they take so long to type. So I send voice notes and I say, hey, we should send voice notes because it's so much faster and easier. And 90% of them say, I don't know how to do that. Oh geez, how? Look at the screen. Where do you think you send the message from? If you guess that microphone in the corner, literally the only thing on the screen, you're correct, you win a prize. And if you think that's the only screenshot, here's another one, I don't have that. Then I explain to him it's the goddamn microphone and he figures it out finally. I'm like, they're tech support. How do they not see that? It's so painfully obvious. Here's another one, up up here is where I sent it to him. And then he sent this at the same time, but then he asks me, how? How do I do that? Remember when men used to fight in wars? What has happened? They can't even find a microphone. Also, look at this question. I thought it was so funny. You can't see the other person's answer until you both answer. What would you do if an ostrich bro- broke in? He said, run. I said, I'd get my man. I was like, wow, we are not compatible. If these are the options, I am happy to be alone. There's <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Cut that bitch off. Next caller. Now, let's go back to the previous video that I showed you. She says men who have options are not patient with women. Now, go back to the, this video that I just showed you. Who does she think she is or going to find that has options that are going to deal with a bitch that want to have voice memos back and forth. I don't have time for this shit, ma'am. I got way too many bitches to talk to and way more important things to do. Like you're annoying. And not only that, you're belittling me about your little technology. Who wants to do voice memos? I find them highly annoying. Let's get to the conversation. Let's meet next in the next three days. I don't got no time for this shit. But this is what they do. Obviously, she's dealing with men who don't value themselves and don't have any options since she's treating them as such. This is the type of treatment you get when women perceive you to be thirsty and have no options. 
this is the treatment. They think they're better than you. Why? The only reason she thinks she's better is that she knows where the voice memo mic is and you don't. Let me tell you, I don't know where the shit is either. Neither do I even want to hear your voice memo. I don't even want to hear your voice memo. And nor do I want to record one. Like, this is how they treat you when you have no options. So they hate when you have options over them. But then when you don't have options, they don't like you. They love when you have the options, but they just don't want to compete. Let's take you to the next video right here. Somewhat kind of proof here. There's a woman here. I think this is a Ling Ling. What does she have to say here? Uh, let's see here. Run. Okay, let me see here. Run when he starts whining about prices. Okay, take a look at what we have here. I mean, Lord. What are we doing here? Ladies, come on, y'all. This is getting ridiculous at this point. All right, let me see here. I somewhat agree with her, but let's talk about this shit. Like, come on, man. Like, look at what we're dealing with here. Okay, let's continue here. Thank you for, hey, ladies, thank you for sharing your shit on social media. I love it. Girl, as soon as he starts making comments like, oh, you bougie, huh? Or even just like really subtle comments about like the price of things, especially the price of anything that you need for your maintenance like your nails, if he's shocked by the cost of like your hair, of like your upkeep, your makeup, just leave, run. If you date this guy long term, he is going to try to scrimp and save on everything. He's going to be like, why don't you go for the Kirkland version and save money, honey? You don't, you don't wanna be around that like cheap energy, that money saving energy. It is going to put you in your struggle mindset and you're going to be so resentful and so annoyed. Definitely not worth it. Girl, as soon as he starts... Let me tell y'all, man. American women are cooked out here. Y'all cooked. You're, you're, you guys are cooked. They don't realize... They don't realize that the guy that they're wanting is of rare... That He's the rarest gem out here. Number one, he's not going to just start throwing money at you. Not off the rip. And if he does, then, you know, he just... He's treating you accordingly. So she's talking about situations that she's supposed to take care of her maintenance. This is your maintenance. But yeah, guys do not understand what a woman's maintenance costs. And she will put this into her budget as far as what she wants to get back in return from a man. I'm fully aware of this. I don't disagree with it. It is what it is. But yes, for them to get their little nails done and get their little eyelashes uh, in there and get their little wig installed and them for them to come out here to compete, it costs them a lot of money. This is their investment in them. By the way, they will invest this. They will pay this cost before they will pay their goddamn rent. I'm just letting you know right now. They will pay this cost before they pay their rent. And you can catch them slipping when they nails ain't all the way done and them nails already, you know, them gels already extended past the dot. Do you see the white of the nails? All right, you see that ombre, you see that hair dye, they ponytail in the back is blonde, but the top of their hair is all black. You see it, especially with Asian women, they are, they're very commonly known to do that. Okay, you, you can see when they're lacking in funds, when that maintenance ain't right. You can see when they start doing their own nails. You can see when they put on their own eyelashes. This, they're very expensive. However, how many men are willing to afford this cost? Very few. Who do you have to be? You have to be a willing, you have to be a woman willing to compete. If you found a man that was willing to contribute to those funds, just know that ninja got mad hoes. He got a lot of women. And he probably could pay for all of those women's little nail appointments. All right, because in her world, $250 nail appointment, that's easy because I'm gonna split them guts and I'm gonna get you to go home and 250 down the drain. Oh, well, or as we say, oh, well, it's going to be easy. So what she'll find is she'll find a guy. Let's go back. She'll find this guy. Where is he at? This woman. She'll find a guy that says, here's your $250. Go get your nails done, baby. Guess what's going to happen? He's going to have four or five of these bitches lined up. Now, some ninja going to say he's simping. $250 is chump change. But it's a lot of money to you, 
and that should tell you who you are as a man because you ain't got 250 because you a normal ninja. So you hurt if you had to pay one bitches 250. He got five bitches 250, and you will call him a simp. Whole well, be a broke ninja and be an angry Mitch at the end of the day. It is what it is. That's how he's getting over in the marketplace. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. He's going to have four or five of these normal, regular women who think, oh, he can pay my 250. All right. Then they're going to do average shit and then get replaced. And then she's going to say, what? These men who have options are not patient with women. So the very thing she liked is the very thing that's going to work against her. The very thing that she liked. Let's go back to this woman. Remember this guy, uh, this girl. A run when he starts whining about prices. So if I showed up with this Ling Ling, here you go. What you what? What you talking about? 250 on your nails? Here. What you talking about? You get your hair done? Okay, here. She gonna stick around. She says that. She gonna stick around. Then when I make her ass jump through hoops and hurdles, and she says, hey, I'm looking for a commitment, and I say, uh... I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Cut that bitch off. Next caller. And I say, ma'am, baby, just, just stay in line. All right, get in line, fall in line. Don't give me no problems. Keep doing what you're doing. But yeah, but I want to commit. I, I want to settle down. I want to show you how much a good woman I am. Okay, keep showing me. Just stick around. Uh, You think I can? No, you can't come over this week. I'll see you when I see you. They can't take it because then they start saying, well, and the minute she pushes the envelope, the minute she pushes the envelope, Guess what happens? He kicks her to the curb. He says, okay, listen, you're giving me way too many problems here. You're, you're, you're really not that good in bed. You're, I mean, you're really, I, I've already, if I sleep with you again, I'm doing you a favor. I'm really just doing you a favor. You're making it easy and convenient for me. You're really not that much better than anyone else. This is really a good situation. But then when she starts complaining, he just drops off the face of the earth. And finds another her. You're telling me I can't find another this woman? You're telling me I can't find another this woman? You're telling me I can't find another this? You're telling me I can't find another this? But can you find another me? The answer is nope. Because she's going to give you just some lazy head. Lay there like a Carl Jr. star. Let you, let you hit. Let you bust. And then that's it. What else can you do? What else can you do? Well, the, whatever you're telling me you can do, I want to see it. Stick around. Stick around. They don't want to stick around. No, I want to find me a guy that's going to fall for this lazy ass effort. Because a woman's true value cannot be estimated until long term. Men, we, we show our value up front. Their value is evaluated long term, not over no three months or five months. Let's listen to this woman right here. She's going to actually say this right here. All right, this woman right here. Listen to what she says on how long it should take for a man to provide, find value in her and commit. All right, here we, and obviously she hasn't gotten this, so this is why she's saying it. Here we go. I asked me on, say we're on our second or third date, and he still hasn't led with clarity, which at that point I'm probably like, I'm not really that interested. If you're not being clear with me, hey, I want to pursue you. I want to be intentional. I could see this like leading into like a future. Yeah. I, I would say at that point, if he hasn't led with clarity and I am interested, I would have no problem being like, hey, bro, like, hey, dude, like, where, where's your head at in yeah. this? Because I don't want to waste my time. All right. Let's continue. There are dudes that are a little bit clueless. Like yeah. I'm not, I mean, oh maybe boy, they're brilliant boy. in the classroom. Maybe they're brilliant at work. I'm not trying to take a jab at their intellect, <laughs> just sometimes socially and emotionally they're clueless. And so they don't even realize that they're leading someone on and girls, uh, young women do this as well. But it's just like, if somebody's clueless and someone has questions, I don't ever mind somebody asking the questions for clarity. Yeah. If a guy asks me on, say we're on our second or third date. and Okay. All right. Man. Okay. Listen, and she's young, so I could see why this would be an issue. The point is not really the second or third date. There was a something bigger. She said 
in this that actually makes me understand or should make us understand what she's looking for. Listen. And he still hasn't led with clarity, which at that point, I'm probably like, I'm not really that interested. If you're not being clear with me, hey, I want to pursue you. I want to be intentional. I could see this like leading into like a future. There you go right there. All right. So when she says, let's go back. When she says, hey, I see you are valuable. I see this leading into the future. Why? Because he had leverage. He had options. And she's saying, I'm competing. But as I told you earlier, they don't want to compete very long. They're going to show you the bare minimum in this marketplace. Two to three dates. Two. So, shoot, wait a minute. Let me, let me get this. You found value in me. I demonstrated value. I don't know what it was. It could be money. It could be status. It could be. I fit the perfect size. I I don't know. But in two to three dates, you said, I'm locking in. And then he said, stick around. She said, nope. They don't like competing. It don't matter if you a pookie, if you a simp, a mitch. If you a damn millionaire, if you the damn Bruce Wayne, it don't matter if you tall, short. It don't matter if you in a wheelchair. She says, I pick you. How do you know in two to three dates that I'm the dude? Because I demonstrated it. I have options. I also demonstrated it by saying, girl, go get your nails done. Right here. Go get your nails done. Who cares? She's like, oh, wow, this is great. Then she finds out she's competing. Then she says, hey, I find value in you. Why don't, we, why, don't we, why don't we lock it in? And he's like, lock it in? Do you barely suck me off? The first time, the second time I took you, I didn't barely get nothing. The third date, I got condom sex. Ladies, stop trying to make dudes get commitment after condom sex. He didn't feel half of it. Mm. It's condom sex. It's like, jump, it's like going uh, diving into a pool wearing a hefty bag. Sounds like a good idea. He ain't getting much feeling out of the damn thing. I know you think he got some guts. He barely ain't got no guts. He got half the guts that you think he got. He ain't ready to double down on no condom sex. Now, if you let, if he hit it raw, you might have a better chance, but I'm not saying that you must, but it's condom sex. He ain't ready to double down on it. So here she goes after two or three times, barely any anything I can see of value. I barely got the guts. I gave some condom sex. <laughs> I got some half guts. And now you trying to make me lock it down. Like where are you? Bruh, I'm looking at you like. Wait a minute. Who are you? Let's take a look. Hey, make me your girl. I see value in you. Where's she at? There she is. And take a look. I mean, I like long hair. And she's a flatback supreme. Well, she's a flatback. She's Kirkland flatback. Clerk Kirkland. Kirkland flatback. This is a woman you can find anywhere USA. She's a Taylor Swift, $2 Taylor Swift. You can find this any suburb. There's 60%. So wait a minute. Let me get the population right. 66% of the female population in America probably looks not too far different than this. 66% of the female population in America looks somewhat like this. Okay, I'll give it to her. 30% of the female population in America looks something like this. Mm. You can go from suburb to suburb to suburb and find this. So I don't see what she's talking about here. That she's trying to make you make a commitment after two or three dates. And then she calls it leading on. Again, they don't like to compete. They don't. I'm not going to compete for long. You're going to make me compete? Okay, I'm on to the next one. And then they keep playing this game. Most of it is because they find value in one person 
and then they lock in and they say, I'm going to do the bare minimum. We got the last guy. I'm going to do the same exact thing. They don't switch their program. I'm going to do the exact same lazy blow job on this guy. <laughs> and then when it don't work, they skedaddle to the next. Last video, and this is this woman saying, you should not marry for love. Okay, let's see what she has to say. Natasha, take it away. Don't marry him for love. People used to get married through matchmaking, and most of the time it was for economical reasons. In our modern society, we have made marriage all about love. We want our husband not only to be our provider, but we want him to be our everything. But let's say you would start a business. Would you hire a CEO just because you have a good feeling about him? No. Because you would hire someone who shares your vision for your business, who shares the same values that you have. And a marriage is the same like starting a company. And when you've married that man based on that you love him so much, when he's going to disappoint you, your whole world will fall apart. That's why you should marry somebody with whom you can build a life together. A man who wants to grow into the same direction that you want to. All right, and so this is mail order AI Natasha in the building. Shout out to her. Uh, listen, in my opinion, she's not wrong. And the reason why is because most marriages in the history of the world have been arranged. They've been for economic purposes. Now, we got into this romance and love thing, and I, and I don't believe that it's the best way to do it. In fact, the statistics tell us it's the worst way to do it. They're the least likely to survive. They have the shortest Romantic marriages have the shortest terms of marriage. Okay, we're, we're in romantic love marriages now. We've been birthed into the romantic love marriage. Overwhelmingly, before our generations, before, during the silent generation and before, they were all economic marriages, all of them. Like damn near all of them, or arranged. That's why people got married. We got into this uh, love affair, this every kiss begins with K, that's a new thing. That's a baby boomer and on forward type of arrangement. We've lived in polygamy, arranged marriages, and economic marriages forever. But here we are here. And so uh, mail order AI Natasha is trying to school them the exact same women that are saying, hey, be patient with me. Fall in love. This woman says right here. This woman says right here. Two to three dates fall in love with me. For what? This woman says, hey, pay for my eye, pay for my nails. Pay for my nails or it ain't love. So you might think AI Natasha is off base. But in reality, this is what these women are saying. They're saying they, they don't feel loved until I find a guy who has options. Either options sexually, options physically, or options financially. Then when they find a guy then they can't do the bare minimum or qualify. They bitch and complain. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. In order to solve this generation's problems, um, in terms of marriage and relationships, we should go to arranged marriages or polyamory or, uh, sorry, or polygamy or polygyny. Starting with the black community. Starting with the black community, the first community that, will, that I would go to arrange marriages is the black community. They obviously need the most help. I would go in there and then just y'all going to be mad at the woman I pick. But the great coach Alini is going to go to every hood on Martin Luther King. I will go to every hood and say, Ruber Stuller looking ninja with the eight pack of hot dogs on the back of your neck. This your woman right here. Fat Kalisha, take her ass right there. That's your woman. I don't want to hear shit. Ninja, take your woman, go build your house and your fort. You, you, Pookie, Pookie, take this drag sexy red and take her ass over there. If you come out the house, if I catch you looking at another bitch, Ninja, we're going to make you a eunuch by tomorrow. Take your ass and sexy red over there. Straggle bitches, do not come over here with these ninjas over here. All these ninjas got value. Take your straggle ass back over there. Stay over there. I'm going to send you a ninja. Stay over there. Stay over there. Hey, you. Hey, ninja right there. You, you, you good looking ninja. You ninja over there. Here, look. I got three girls for you over here. Get this one right here. Get these girls right here. Take these three with you. Take these three with you. Ninja, you don't need no more. You thirsty ninja. 
All right, no more macking from your ass. Take your Mac ass over there. You got three bitches. Get their ass on rotation. You deserve it, Ninja. You the bull. All right, you goofy ass Ninja with the degree from Florida A&M with all them damn teeth with them black ass gums. You, you over here. Take this woman right here. She the prettiest one in the group right here. Take her, Ninja, and stay with her ass. Don't, don't, don't let her out. Don't let this bitch out right here. Hey, bitch, if I catch your ass out here trying to run the carousel, trying to get out there with that hot ass puss, all right, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a send your ass back. Yeah, you take that, take her. Everybody take your bitch. Everybody be happy with your, shut up, shut up. <laughs> and then all the girls who graduated high school going into junior college, come with me. Come in here. Come with me. All y'all over there. Class of 2023. Head over here, here, uh, single file line, class of 2023. Oh, shoes off, socks off, socks off. Take them shoes off. I need y'all to march in the single file line. Take all of y'all right over there, up the hill, up the ramp. Yes, file in there. We're going to make sure we prepare you for your future wives, your future husbands. I'm going to get y'all prepared for your future over, over there. So uh, security guards, take 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 these take the class of 2023 on up in there. Take them, yeah, uh huh, yeah. I'll be up there soon. I'll be up. Mm. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'm gonna get them ready. Hey, y'all, little starving ass ninjas with your booties out. Hey, man, go get your ass to work over there. Get your ass to work. I got some girls. I send them down for y'all. Y'all need to wait about two years. I'm gonna wait sure these girls ready for you. We gonna put them through some. Yeah, we're going to put them, take the goddamn eyelashes off your eyes. Get that, take them eyelashes. And we're going to make them ready for y'all. Y'all got to put in some work, though, first. Put in some work. I know y'all horny, ninja. Just just relax. Take your ass out there and go to work. All right, I had them ready for you in two years. Once I'm done with them, they're going to be ready. Mm. Y'all want that? Yeah, that's a good plan. I think that's, I'm being fair. I'm being fair. <laughs> And anybody get divorced, I'm taking your wives to the reconstruction class, too. Any, hey, you want to get divorced, lady? Okay, you want a divorce? Come on up. I'm going to take you to the 52-point inspection. I got to inspect your ass before I put you out there. What do y'all think, man? Yo, that sounds like a... I like this plan. I like this plan. Let's make it. Let's give it a round of applause. I'm glad y'all agree. By the way, we'll put it to a vote. The vote will be as fair as the 2020 election. We'll do a mail-in ballot. We'll vote on this. Shout out to (laughs) y'all. No, anyway. All right. I won't go knee deep. I'm going to just sample. Not everybody going. We won't touch them all. I'll leave them. I'll leave them ready for you. (laughs) Lady, sign up in the back if you want. Hey, man, I have the solution. I have the solution. Anybody down with this? Okay. Yeah, I thought y'all was good. All right. uh, Anyway. The solution is not going to be perfect for everybody, but it will be fair and equitable. Anyway, y'all like, we ain't voting you in. All right, I got to take the power. Anyway, shout out to Cam. Thank you, brother, for that contribution. Thank you very much. <laughs> Every It's going to be more fair and equitable as the current dating marketplace, indeed. All right, uh, anyway, and then I'll go to the other communitas. Charles E. says, CGA, I'm paying $1,500 dollars a month in child support and she still texts me about boxing fees loan for dog treatments and it says right here saying good morning and good night to the kids etc so you get see this is where the double dip is because in every child support obligation there's still an obligation that you cover what the child support does not cover which is what the problem is that's why because guys are like all right, I'm paying 1500 a month. And then she says, well, you still need to pay half of this and half of that. See, this is a double dip. And what she's thinking is that the system is going to reward her to cover all expenses. But I have children. These children, the expenses never go down. They're always continually to go up, especially as a, a young child gets older into adolescence. So why the double dipping? 
at $1,500 a month. That should cover everything. And then whatever you need to cover, take it out of your child support. But the problem is the way women budget, this is why the state never gets on them, is she sees child support as income. So she will put it in her normal budget process. I get 30000 I get 3000 a month from my job. I get $500 a month from my first baby daddy, $1,500 a month from my second baby daddy. And she'll round it all the way up and say, I make $4,500 a month. Or, yeah, no, it's more like uh, 5000 So she'll take that 5000 pay her rent, pay her bills, and she'll say, well, child support should include housing. I mean, I, I don't see it that way, but go ahead. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Everybody's supposed to be responsible for their own housing, but but then she'll budget it that way. And then out of, this is called commingling funds. Any company does that, they're going to get audited, right? Mm. Yes, yeah, girl math. Any company does that, commingle funds like that, you're at risk of, you're, you're basically cooking the books. So then at the end of it, how much is left out of your budget to pay for these extra things? Well, you can't tell how much is child support. You can't tell what comes from your income, from your job. You can't tell. She can't tell. So then she'll say, hey, listen, I have budget problems. Thus, you need to pay for these items. And you're like, well, you got child support. And then she says, well, I don't have much left over after I paid all of these things. You have a budgeting problem then. Mm. Or, or you have an income problem, meaning you need to get another job. You need to get another job. Well, I can't because I have the kids. Okay, send the kids over to me. No, that's going to mess up the, the child support. They're all, they're all doing fuzzy math like this. Don't blame you for not meeting their obligations. I'm not here to meet your obligations. I'm here to pay child support or support the children. What is your obligation? What does your lack of budgeting ability do have to do with me? <laughs> I didn't have enough left over to get food. Well, what, how, what does that have to do with me? They're, they're ruthless like this, and they're somewhat like, it's, it's, I would say, dare say, they're dumb in the way they do things, but of course, girl math. Anyway, Kaylin says, little girls need to see their dads winning too, indeed, indeed, and especially if they ever expect to have the woman's laser uh, insight on selecting good men, why would they want their the man that's close to them to lose? John Will, he says, Coach, it's been a while. I'm catching these replays, though. Happy birthday. Hope it's a good one. Thank you, brother. It's, it's, it's later in the week, but shout out to you. Yeah, if the first primary man in their life loses, they're probably going to pick a loser because that's all they know. Shout out to Michael R. He says, these modern women hate us because they can't control us. Indeed. That's when they can control, he says, then when they can control us, they hate us and hate themselves. Men need their power back. You can't have people who are slaves to their emotions rule. That's what a tyrant is. Yep. And so I, I, have, a, I have a philosophy. All of you guys, you don't have to follow it. I never let a woman lead me. I barely would have a woman as my boss, but I've had some female bosses, some of them good, some of them bad. But I just will never put my situa- myself in a situation like that. I-, I will never do it because they're never going to do what's right for everybody as a collective. All right, never. Now, there could be exceptions to the rule, but I just n- would never do that. And a lot of people will do this. They'll let their kid, they'll follow their kid around. Man, look, y- kids got one choice. Follow daddy or follow the goddamn leader. Follow the, follow the bag. But if you come in after your kid and the kids dictating rules of association, man, you crazy. You absolutely crazy to follow that. Man, you nuts. <laughs> like, hell no. And again, you're not putting the onus on the child to actually be the mature one. But a kid could never, should never set the terms of what they need to do in order to be parented from no damn adult. Are you crazy? Mm. You got to be goofy in your head to ever do that. Ninja, you be like, Ninja, I'm the goddamn steam engine. I'm the boat. What are you talking about? 
You think, <laughs> do you realize you need to be on my boat? Are you crazy? He says, my son controls his mother. And they'll never let you know, man. This is crazy. I mean, I, the mindset that people have out here is nuts. You can't let people who have less responsibility in society, less ability to protect themselves. Then you can constantly telling this man that he needs to protect the kids or her. How the hell are you going to leave me? How? Like, I don't get it, man. Like, look, I'm very black or white. I don't have any gray areas. This is what makes me the coach leaning. How do you do that? Like, how do you justify that? But in our world, we do that. Well, I have feelings. No, nah, your feelings ain't your feelings. He says, please stop taking the Lord's name in vain. Man, you talking to a guy with a God complex. I'm going to piss you off if you ever say some shit like that. I'm just letting you know. Ninja, you can listen or not listen. I got a God complex, so never never do that shit with me. I'm a non-believer. Come, so it is what it is. <laughs> Ninja, if you have a problem with this, take it up with your God or go somewhere else. Go back to church where your pastor's pass, passing out STDs. So stop with the bullshit. Ninja, if that's all you heard, then that's all you're able to hear. But I can't control what you hear. And I can't, you ain't going to control what I say. Take your ass and go pray to your sky daddy. I, don't, don't take that up with me. If you don't want to hear it, take your ass somewhere else. All right? It is what it is. <laughs> no, nah, we ain't going to block him. Let him take his own choice and get his ass out of there. All right, but uh, it is what it is. All right, shout out to Kayla says, little girls need to see their dad winning. Shout out to you. Anyway, come on. Ninja, you think you can come over here and tell me what to say and what not to say? What you can do is close the stream. That's what you can do. That's all I got. That's all control you got over here. <laughs> Ninja, go tell me, tell me what to say. Have you been missing the entire show? I say what I want to say. You decide if you want to listen. All right, anyway, <laughs> the hell's going on with people, man? Man, you should say this. Man, I, don't, don't control my speech. I support free speech. If you don't like it, that's your, that's your choice. Shout out from Joe, showing love. Shout out to the coach gang. This show is always filled with bad knowledge. He says, being the best version of yourself will always pay off 100%. That's where the leadership is. That's what we're trying to do, man. <laughs> All right, that's what we try to do when we out here, man. Look, man, we want guys to feel very, very confident about themselves, control what you control, and we, we're out here trying to tell you, like, really, you know, be the best version of yourself. That's a very common thing for people to say, but it is true. All right, Fix His Minds says, you make me wonder just I think you meant just how or now what percentage I'm in for what I make. Okay, he says, and I just checked on the website. Turns out I'm in the top 4%. Praise God. Give me the prices right music. Did you guys know? A lot of you guys are in the top 4% of earners in the world. Okay. Top 4% of earners in the world. When we're talking about what you make in America, you're the top 4, 10% of earners in America. I mean, in the world, it's one of those things that people don't realize. But of course, when you make that much money, there's more money to be made. So you're really not even comfortable with that amount of money. Sad part is in America, it costs you a lot of money to live here. I want people to understand that. And guys, it's never going to stop. I told you this, that guys, I told you this, it costs a lot of money to live. It costs a lot of money, especially when you enter in the age of 50 and 60. Your income is going to peak and then dip. So when your income becomes fixed or you're thinking about retiring, you're still going to need a certain amount of money to make it. So even if you get to the top 10% of earners, it's not going to feel like a lot. It's, it's going to feel like a lot more than you had 20 years ago. But you're still going to have to plug away. You're still going to have to plug away. One thing that Kevin Samuels said is that he said about the high value man income, the legendary six figure. He said, you got to make that over five years to be able to be considered. Now, again, I'm not agreeing with that, but I think we can take something from that. Is that when you get to that amount of money, you got to make that over 20 years. 
Like plan to try to make that over 20 years. Doing it for one or two years, that's nice. But you got to make that over 10, 15, and then keep a lot of it and invest most of it. That should be going to money market account, investments, whatever you're doing, whatever type of investments, the majority of it. That means you cannot have another person in your life squander it. You can't have another person in your life getting you in debt. You can't have another person in your life or yourself get you into a situation where you're living beyond your means because they'll look at the money there and they'll spend it. You'll look at it and say, I can have five baby mamas and they're going to tap into that money and tear your shit up. Then they'll, you won't be able to build the wealth over five, 10, 15, 20 years. The true essence. Remember our favorite three letters are C P and R when it comes to money. It doesn't matter how much you make, but when you start investing, you don't see compound interest, which is the C, blue chip. You don't see compound interest until 15 years, 12, 15 years down the line. CPR, compound passive residual. That all comes from long-term earning. So five years, 10 years, 12, going into 15. Then compound interest doesn't kick in until 12 to 17 years of earning good money, being diligent, staying out of debt, and not living beyond your means. That's like 12 or 17 year battle. Once you get there, then you're secure. This is why another reason that I don't understand this idea of building together. Uh, uh, there's no building together. There's no building together. Those days are gone. <laughs> Those days are gone. Women aren't trying, hold on for a second. Women aren't trying to build with you anymore. Let's show you. They're not trying to build. They're not trying to build. They trying to come spend some goddamn money. They're trying to find you, and they trying to spin your shit up. There it is. Two dates, two dates, three dates. Let's get in here. Let's get married. And then spin your money up. And then, at best, if, you, if, they, if they stop being happy, they're going to destroy your money. I'm not happy. <laughs> they're going to destroy it. They're going to take whatever y'all built, as far as y'all gone, and destroy it. Meaning through your kids, meaning through your, uh, let me see here. Let me just show you here. Wait a minute. Show you right here. They're going to destroy the wealth. This is what divorce is. It's a destruction of the wealth, the family lineage. It's a death of the lineage. It's the death of the legacy. It is the death of the finances. It's gone. We just show, I mean, example after example after example. This one right here that everybody uh, just basically said, look, this is uh, the Jonas guy. It's the death of the family, death of the finances. Now your family, now your kids being shipped back and forth on a tuna can overseas. So then whatever you built, 50, 70% of the time is going to be destroyed before the kids reach 18. Mm. Then you have to build again from there. So I literally had to build again from there. I had to have everything destroyed, then rebuild from there. I started off living in the back of my Ford Explorer. (laughs) <laughs> right I was like okay how do I rebuild I'm gonna move into my car get rid of all of this shit I got rid of everything except for a recliner a blender and a uh, Nintendo Wii and whatever clothes that I had left over started over rebuilt it from scratch <laughs> so guys that's what happens guys it, it, listen and all it took for her to say was I'm not happy <laughs> that's it that's how they can do it. I, I'm not happy. So think about this when you're, when you're thinking about some of these things, man. You got to think very much long term. Or else you're trying to get women and have no leverage. This is not going to be good for you. You got to have leverage. When you have leverage and you put hands on hips, you will realize that the woman in your life should not bring confusion. She should be exceptional or extraordinary extraordinary meaning extraordinary and no the puss can't be on fire and no she can't swallow my kids and get the ring but y'all let a woman swallow your kids one good time and she's a a, not a she's a she's a she's not a spitter and she's not a quitter she swallowed a whole kids and y'all ready to turn over your whole life and legacy she give you a couple pieces of peace leave, and then she'd be like, all right, I gave you two pieces of leg. Turn it in. One of the reasons I believe in age gap relationships is I believe that women are asking for age gap relationships. They're asking for it. 
and they don't realize it. Like mathematically, what they're asking of men is a man at least 10 to 15 years older than them. I don't care what age he is. At least 10 to 15, what they're asking for. I want a guy to have this and this and this. Okay, I'll do bad all by myself. You're asking for a guy 15 years older than you. I don't care if the woman's 40. She's asking for a guy in his 50s or 60s. I don't care if the woman's 25. She asking for a guy that's 40. He needs to do this, and he need to make this, and he need to be able to pay for my nails. He need to leave, know what my expenses are. He needs to be able to help and cover. You asking for a ninja that's 45. Because <laughs> the guy your age ain't got it. I know you see him on the internet. That guy is the 1% guy. He's a rare exception. So this woman right here, this little Ling Ling, this woman asking for an old white man. She, asked, she begging for an old white man. Because this woman looks like she's 25. She's begging for a white man that's 52. That would gladly hand her over some money. Okay, go take care of yourself and leave me alone. All right. Leave me alone. I got charts to look at. It's crazy, man. Yeah, they want it too. There you go. They want daddy 2.0. I love that. They want dad 2.0. That's what they're asking for. Anybody who can ever disagree with me, yep. They, they're not looking for a mate. Okay, daddy. They're looking for dad 2.0. I like that. Thank you, brothers, for that. I know somebody else probably coined that in the sphere. Maybe not. But take care of me, daddy. Daddy, pay this. Daddy, pay. Ninja, who is this? Who am I? Daddy Warbucks? We got a couple more chats. Fix his binds. Shout out to you. Samson Keller says, yo, coach. He says, been down 75 days with a broken elbow. Oh, a pothole yeeted me off my ninja. Oh, gosh. He says, had to tighten my belt. He says, now I'm clear to work again. Put me in, coach. Shout out to you, and thank goodness you still alive. Man, Daniel McGee says, free agent lifestyle works best for me. There's not many XXs that deserve the lifestyle that I provide, especially being a six-figure ninja. Relationships are low ROI. Indeed, low return of investment. I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Cut yeah. that bitch up. And, uh, Let's go. and, uh, uh, they don't see it though, because they see value in you. They see value in you. I, you know, when you get to a certain position, they see value in you. They're like, "Oh, you're able to do this and afford that, and go here, go there, and this doesn't bother you." That could be attractive to them to a certain extent. So then, when you, but they don't realize that there's multiple women that could be in that situation. When you want peace as your biggest thing, I need peace. Please don't disturb this. This is where they wrestle with the problem. Well, I just want to be around you. I have people that will just sit downstairs while I'm streaming. Just sit there. As opposed to be dealing with broke ninjas and pookies and ray rays and shit like this. They know a winner, but what can they do? What separates them from the other women? Not very much. Not very much. I'm going to do an interesting show. A lot of guys won't be ready for this. The Mitches are going to be mad. I'm going to do a show on the five women, uh, because I don't believe one woman can complete you, although it is a rare exception that they can. And there's that thing about women have five guys that fill five different voids, emotional, physical, financial, daddy 2.0. I'm going to do the five women that all men could use. Because I don't believe one woman can complete the circle. Yes, I'm a polygynist. The five women. And what, vo maybe we'll do that today. Huh? And I'm almost done here. We'll do that today. I think all ninjas that are high value or higher valued or free agents or whatever. What role the five women should play. And ladies, all five of y'all should be quiet as a church mouse pissing on cotton. All five women should have peace and bring peace. Ladies, are you ready for this? Ladies, I know. Y'all ready for this? Coach the concubiner. Five. They ain't going to be ready for this one. But we're going to have to talk about it. Because mathematically, this is possible. Mathematically, it's possible. 
mathematically, it would not even, it wouldn't even affect the market. Matter of fact, mathematically, we're already doing this. Mathematically, we're already doing this. So let's just get this straight before we do it. Literally, we're already doing this. So this would not be out of the realm of possibility of this happening. We're already kind of doing this. We're doing this through the dating marketplace. We're doing this through speed dating. We're doing this through, hey, that's the guy. We're doing this through, hey, he had, he's not patient with me, but he has options. We're already kind of doing this, but we're going to be more specific tonight. How about we do that? All right, then let's finish it up and get up out of here. Shout out to Daniel McGee. Free agent lifestyle works best for me. JC says, I never knew so much about status and value until I became a free agent. I've been a six-figure ninja for 10 years. I invest 50% on my income, coochie games don't work out here. And this this is a lot of uh, the situation as well. A lot of guys don't know about value. A lot of guys believe that the woman is the only one that brings value. Right? The woman's going to be this. She's going to be my everything. She's going to complete me. She's going to be my, you know, uh, but we never really look at it as the man has value. Like, I think in the space, it was earlier, they would say men are the prize. We were one of the first spaces to take this approach. Men are the prize. And I will even say the game guys, the PUAs, some of these guys, pimps, they actually had the men are the prize mindset. Like I'm the prize. I got the value here. And she says, but I got the puss. He's like, that don't matter. Get on the street. <laughs> okay. It's a valuable thing, but then they learn how to monetize it and commoditize it where they gave it less power. See, a true PIMP doesn't give puss the power, meaning it doesn't have power over him. If you know about true PIMP culture, they're not really, they're not really starving ninjas. What they've done is they say, I realize the power, I'm going to make the trick pay for it. And then he gets to live a lifestyle off of what the tricks pay for. So they're the ones that the P doesn't, the P doesn't affect them. It doesn't have control over him. And he, he'll literally have relationships with these women, but he'll let another man hit it. Now, guys, it's a real far-off concept that a lot of guys don't understand because you think you're a PIMP because you get multiple women to bed. That doesn't make you a PIMP. You think you're a PIMP because you don't have relationships with women. PIMPs have relationships with women. They'll be have their girlfriend or bottom bit. They'll be their girlfriend, and their girlfriend will be lent out to men for money, and that'll be their girlfriend. That's her girlfriend. That's the woman that he thinks is his wife. But, guys, it's a really twisted mindset. However, the, the things you can cherry pick from it is they're not starving over the P. It doesn't elevate. It doesn't, it, it doesn't become the all power. They can basically say, okay, you can do whatever with that thing, but just make sure I understand, make sure I, all the money comes back to me. It, they're not possessive. They'll share... And then she can't reign that power over you of the P. She can't bring the, she can't bring the P back to, to you and say, I have power over you because I have this P. You're like, I don't care about that. <laughs> as long as whoever you messing with pays a pimp or you pay a pimp. But it's a really, it's a really crazy uh, mindset. But it's a mindset that a lot of guys have because you will let the P control you. You'll let the P, you'll pedestalize the P. You'll let that be the only P you ever get. It's different. I don't see it as, anyway, I'm getting too lost here. Shout out to Kyrie or Kyrie. He says, to the coach gang, you keep speaking, ah, to the coach gang, keep spitting facts. All right, let me see here. That's on cash. Okay, I think I got all of those. I think I got Kalen. We're almost done. I just got to make sure I get everybody because they're going to be like, did you read my chat? And we're almost done. Hit the like button on the way out. I appreciate y'all brothers with the support. Let me check up over here real quick. Okay, we got all of those. And then I think we got all of those. All right, so with the ones I didn't get, maybe I'll cover them. Anyway, shout out to the Coach Gang, and we'll be back this evening. I'm going to put that show together. We out of here. Peace.
barbecue in there.